Hey guys, sorry, I was muted, and this is just a... <laughs> this is live. This is how this works. We're here for CharityHammer.com. Donate for the children. We're going to be donating off, the, or raffling off this stuff right here. Very shortly, we've got the Kill, Ta Kill Team Octarius box. That thing weighs like 20 pounds. We've got Valerian and Alea, the Black Library Celebration Kit, and then more blood letters, because you know what? No one can have enough blood letters except for John Quinnell. That's what we say here. They're going to be really good eventually. PM. <laughs> Just like Half-Life 3. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, we are here to talk about the least represented Space Marine faction out there. And we're going to be talking about it with... I, one would argue probably one of the best players in the world with said faction, and that is Death Watch. Yeah, you I are Fred Fortman. Yes. On my license. Yeah. yeah. You have, so a little history for people. You came to the Qualifier GT from Chicago. You came yes. out here. Won. Like, very clearly won. Like, did, like, did an amazing job. And then came in fourth, I believe, for the actual Charity Hammer GT? Eight. Eighth. Got to the final eight, and uh, Nick Nanavati got me with his uh, pre-nerf uh, Ducari. That pre-nerf Ducari will do that. Yeah. But you, I think you all opened our eyes to just how much of a Swiss Army knife Death Watch could be, mm -hmm. and um, it's been really cool seeing even your what you do with them like evolve over time. And you're like, oh, now there's the Vanguard vet with the hammer, and like just like. Each little piece of tech that you've added on, what do you feel is the most important like way you've been able to iterate on that? Uh, the biggest thing for me has been the, the change from a, a shooting mentality to a close combat mentality. Okay. Um, the Death Watch's basic chapter tactics are reroll ones to hit in melee against Xenos, mm -hmm. and uh, reroll ones to wound against uh, Xenos uh, in melee. Mm -hmm. So uh, to be the most effective, you need to be fighting up close. Um, one of the other iconic things about Death Watch is the kill team, which is a mixture of several different uh, basic space uh, marine units fine. all together into one rather, unit. Uh, one of my favorites is the Proteus kill team, which is a mixture of um, uh, so veterans. So they're two no, like, uh, firstborn marines. Uh, uh, bikes, veteran bikes, so there are two attacks. Uh, Billy's, bikes is a, Billy's, a, a, Billy's over regular Billy's bikes, Billy's Terminators, Billy's and Vanguard veterans. Um, mixing they these together, it seems like they, they shouldn't go together. Sure. Uh, so it's very easy to just put the five uh, walking veterans together, and then a mixture of bikes and Vanguard vets together. Combat squatted, and you have a fast moving five man unit, and you have a slow moving five man unit, and separate them out. But um, a gentleman from England, Michael Costello, opened a lot of the Death Watch players' eyes to a Proteus kill team that we now call the Costello-style Proteus kill team, where you have the five slow-walking veterans. You have a Black Shield, who's also slow-walking, but he has extra attacks. He's weapon skill two. So he Doesn't he give an option for heroic intervention He as well? also is a one CP strategy if he's in there for a three-inch heroic intervention. See, I know my Marines a little bit. And then you take um, uh, Terminator, uh, one or two Terminators for tanking, and you take uh, uh, a mixture of Vanguard vets and bikes. Wait, the way I have it right now, on the spur of the moment, before the way I have it right now is I have two Vanguard veterans, one bike, uh, Terminator, Black Shield, and then five veterans. Uh, when the unit is first deployed together, real close, its initial movement is um, almost 14 inches. Um, because of the way you can string out sure. the different movements of each individual model in the unit, um, uh, which makes it incredibly effective in getting someplace. Sure. Yeah. Um, well, I think we, we saw that um, in uh, one of your games. It was on the lava table. Um, yeah, it was against Matt Evans' Tyranids. Yes. Yeah, we saw you kind of clump up in two main areas and then just explode out. Yeah. Matt went first, and a lot of times when somebody goes first against, this is the uh, Army of Renown, mm -hmm. which allows me at the top of every turn to pick one chapter tactic that a Marine unit, from, I mean from the Codex, mm -hmm. and my entire army has it. So uh, what I usually do is if somebody's going first against me, I most often will pick White Scars, because then I'll get the bottom of turn one, they move closer to me, and that advance and charge will allow me and all that close combat 
uh, sure. units really to get player. into whatever came forward in that time. Sure. And in that game, uh, he came forward with, uh, he was very aggressive. This is, it was at three in the morning, so oh, yeah. just throw everything in. It and was, nice. yeah, it was really, it was really going. He was very aggressive, and I used the White Stars uh, tactic to get deep into all of his units that he had moved out of his deployment zone. And um, able to eliminate one, two, three, four, five of them. Uh, two of them survived. Dean Steelers got cut in half, but they survived. And the Swarm Lord was the only one I didn't attack. That initial, an initial uh, uh, go at it. Yeah, no, it, it was really. Uh, it, it was funny where they're like, so what killed the, the monster? And I'm like, well, that was the aggressors. Like, they're just gonna be like, bye. <laughs> yeah, there's a three CP uh, stratagem for the Army of Renown called. Uh, um, short name of it is extremist uh, which allows a unit uh, that uh, hits either in the shooting phase or the fight phase all of their hits auto wound mm -hmm. um, so the aggressors it, it's an indometer kill team made with five heavy intercessors with hellstrom bolt rifles which are three shots each and then aggressors who each have six plus d6 shots each mm -hmm. and so i think i put out 57 shots um, out of them uh, I have a Primaris Chaplain who has a litany of plus one to hit in shooting. Mm -hmm. He had given it to them mm -hmm. uh, at the start. The captain had jumped up with a jump pack, jumped with the Indometer team as they moved up. And so I was hitting on twos, re-rolling ones. Uh, if I really want to kill a lot of things with that stratagem, I'll switch the chapter tactic to Imperial Fist. That's what I was going to say. Which so means have, they ignore cover and their sixes explode. Yeah, exploding sixes that auto auto wound are pretty <laughs> I great. Get, I will get around 70 wounds when that happens. Yeah. Um, uh, through all the various uh, trickeries. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, so good. So what is another piece of, like, tech that uh, you can do with Death Watch that you feel like maybe people don't underrate or don't understand or... One of the things that surprised Matt was... Um, my also, jump. you got to show off your shirt a little more. Oh yeah, like, that's that's super there rare. you are, right there. Yeah, that's the, the, that's the OG shirt. You can't get that. Like you, that, there are like ten of those. I know. I, I'm a. When you guys told me that last year, like I don't wear it anymore except to just charity him. You know, that's I think amazing. I might have brought it to LVO, but I didn't put it on that year. But that's it. It's only because I don't want it to fade or wear out. Oh I sure. I don't want to wash it too much. Oh, that means that's, that's so touching. One of the pieces of tech that I just can't get away from. Every time I want to get away from it, there's a game where I'm like, oh, I really needed it. Is uh, the jump pack captain? I give him a mastercrafted Xenoface sword. Oh, the ignore so invos. It, 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 it's AP four naturally, and it ignores invos. So Death Watch can control what um, doctrine they're yeah. in, and so I can put myself in assault, assault doctrine yeah. whenever I want. And he had gone into the Swarm Lord as a Blood Angel, so he was uh, strength five. It was in the assault doctrine. It was so it's minus five, and uh, it's two damage. So even Swarm Lord's two plus save, has no save from it at all. Yeah. And at Blood Angels, I was plus one to wound. Oh. And uh, put a bunch of wounds on him. Hachi Machi, that's uh, tasty. It, it, the, the ignore invulnerable is so because I had also hit him with uh, four heavy thunder hammers, which are all uh, AP four, uh, four damage each. Yeah. And he made all of his four plus invulnerable. Yep. You know, that's... It, that it, turned the game right there. With Swarm, if Swarm Lord dies, then everything else shuts down. Yep. But with Swarm Lord alive, he was able to kill the captain. Then he killed the Proteus kill team, and then it ended it. Well, and that's and that consistency to be like, no, you do not get that. But it's also great for assassins and so many different things. It was. It's in there originally for elf characters. Yeah. Oh, because yeah. they have so many. Like the the Harlequins Tricks. have four plus. Um, well, and then and the solitaires are three plus, and they get re rolls. Well, and then back when they had the luck laughing dice and stuff, they're yes. they're just like, oh, I'm gonna make these now, and you're like, you don't get them, you can't yes. make them. The two plus save archon, <laughs> he's not tanking anything; yeah. he's just dying outright. Yep, you know, it's it's uh, yeah, no, it yeah. solves a lot of it solves a very nice little niche of of problems. Yes, yes it, it it does. How it, many points? He's one twenty. Oh yeah, that's good value. And so you said jump pack, jump pack okay. uh, captain with the Xenoface uh, yep. sword. He comes with a master crafted bolt gun, which in the Death Watch is um, um, special, special issue. Yeah, so not just, bad. Yeah, just for free. Um, he just solves can you that upgrade it to a storm bolter with it? Uh, you can give him a storm bolt, but you storm don't bolters get, don't get uh, uh, SII anymore. Yeah, that's 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 my old edition brain going. But he's really there just for the just for, to deal with something unique. And in yep. a game where my opponent doesn't have something like that, then he does other just, things. He just hangs out with a you know reroll ones to hit every <laughs> yeah. now and then. He just busts stuff. He could go and just you know kill some intercessors. That's fine. So are, with all the changes, is it time 
Has the moment come? Are you going to feel the Land Raider? I can't take a Land Raider to the Army of Renown. You're only, the only vehicles oh. you can take at all are transports, dedicated transports. So oh. I'm not allowed speeders. I'm not allowed dreadnoughts. Crushing. I could take, oh, I could, uh, I could take rhinos, razorbacks, oh, okay. impulsers, repulsers. No, I can't even take a repulsor because that's not a dedicated transport. Uh, I can take a Corvus Black Star, which is the Death Watch specific flyer. Uh, that's allowed in the Army realm, but nothing else. And it, actually, just before this, I was, uh, I was sitting over here looking at lists, reworking them because I – Trying to go away from the AOR sometimes um, because I know I get more flexibility uh, when I do, but sure. I just can't. It's no, so it's so cool. It like well, it's also just that one ability to just be like whatever is in this vector right here. God. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's really cool. Um, okay, so let's do some giveaways. I promised this like 15 minutes ago. I'm such a liar. Okay. These guys have been waiting and donating, and they're like, "Hey, this isn't fair." Let me um, make sure that this is updated. Oh, I went out of it. Damn it, I gotta find it again. Sheets for the giveaway. That will be in. Oh, it's in uh, BitPod. Yeah, it's in BitPod. Got it. Okay. Uh, I need you to pick a number between 1 and 260. 100 even. 100 on the money. I think that might have already won a prize, but we're going to find out. Already won a prize. We're going to go to the closest. P. Cray Ford. Oh, hold on. I got to get into edit. <laughs> Sorry. There are more steps here. but Yes, you've won the Valerian and Alea. That's That's super rad. So that was... You said a hundred and something. Yeah, close to one to hundred. Yep. Uh, TK Ford got Valerian. That's close enough. Cool. Next one. I need another number. Two one three. Two one three for the blood letters. Two thirteen. Lucky two thirteen. Already won something. Uh, so we'll go to the closest. Jeremy, just flat out Jeremy. You have one blood letters. If your name is Jeremy, just sit at home. This might be in your mailbox within a week. You never know. Yeah. Any Jeremy out there. That could be you. Could yeah. be any Jeremy. Yep. Okay. Could be Jeremy Knoxville. We don't know. Yeah, that's right. And then it's time for the big mamma jamma. Oh, we Donated from Mugu Games in Everett, Washington. in Everett, Washington. We want to make sure that they get credit for this. This is a huge box. So heavy. It takes two guys. Two middle-aged ish men and be like Ugh. like there's a lot here there's a it's lot like of turn a baby it's a whole table and two squads and the rules dice give me a number who you, this is in your hands literally and figuratively and metaphorically even spiritually possibly oh okay the guy that just won the last thing uh on the chat he said, hey, that's me cool <laughs> jeremy <laughs> you got blood letters bud uh 69 Oh, nice. They want something. Yeah. Ah, you guys. Yeah. Another number. Yeah, and uh, there's nothing even close to that, so. 181. That is. Oh, um. If someone's already won something. If it's an Art of War thing, they can win. Uh, well, if they don't. No, I, I know that he's won before. Because I, I donated. Maybe he turned it down. I don't know. All right, well, we can come back to this. Okay. Uh, I, I will mark it. Uh, it is Zane Swamp Miss Zoller? He might have already won something. That's so right. we can come back. We'll come back. Yeah, we'll mark it, and if not, we will have an alternate, and we will let you guys know. But awesome! So, are we ready on tables yet? Oh well, then, man, we've got a lot of Death Watch to talk about. No, I'm kidding. We'll we'll grab someone else. <laughs> If you have more to talk about for Death Watch, if there is more tech you want to talk about and you want to share with the world, you want to get the good word out there so people can start painting their bikes black and their shields however the hell they I want. I really don't need a very many people with experience against what the army can do because that won't help me very much. Okay. <laughs> Why don't we trade him out for McDougal who just played a one point game in the chaos now? Hey, McDougal. Alex. Get your ass in this thing. chair. Come on. He win that game? No, he lost by one point. Oh my gosh. Those are exciting. Can you take over for a minute? Yeah, sure. Awesome. You'll, you'll have better questions for him anyway. Yeah, sit down. 
I, hey. Okay. Yes. Hey, guys. This is maybe the world's best Tyranid player. He just happens to be here. We're going to find out tomorrow, I guess. Yeah, he, dro <laughs> he drove five hours last night from middle of nowhere, British Columbia. Um, I think that's a fair way to describe where you live. If it's not Vancouver, all of BC is middle of nowhere, that's, yes. That, right, that's what I'm saying. Like, I think this town that I'm in right now is bigger than the town that you live in. But There's 30,000 people here. It's about the same. Okay. Yeah. So, and we're, we are in a very small area of Washington right now. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, this is Alex McDougall, if you guys have never met him before. Uh, he just played the everything updated, all new Tyranids into, into 14 War Dogs. Well, how yeah. many data sheets does Michael have in his list? One. Two? No, it's one. It's oh, just it's different one. war gear. Okay. Uh, and I didn't know, while you were playing that game, I thought you were just going to get flat tabled. And I went and asked John and Tyler about it, and they said, oh, this matchup is actually already was already bad for Tyranids mm -hmm. before the nerfs. Oh, yeah. So can you talk about that? Why was it already a hard matchup before you even got uh, nerfed? The profiles just line up so well. There's okay. Strength 6, AP minus 2. All right. Everything in my army is toughness 5 <laughs> with a 4 plus armor save. Uh -huh. So he is just perfectly scooting over... Toughness value <laughs> and perfect AP, and it's all volume at strength or damage one. So even stuff like Tyranid Warriors being like, oh, minus one damage doesn't do anything. Right, because you're so much one damage is hitting you. Yeah. So, yeah, just when your whole army that's against you, is like, they all have the same gun. It's, it's just 13 Armagers or War Dogs or whatever that all have the perfect profile. <laughs> be like if I... It's, it'd be like if we were going to play and my army was just nothing but the perfect anti-tank. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then and then also the charge thing is a real problem for Tyranids. Yes, that actually won. Let's, we let's, figured that that was the final victory on the game. So how does that work? Basically, it's a strat that, that makes it so you have to pass a leadership test to make your charge. Is that how it works? No, it just turn two rolls around and now you have to make leadership tests to charge at not half distance for the rest of the game. That's real good. That's real good against Tyranids. Yeah, because everything's Tyranids. leadership five. Remember yeah. when that book came out and we started playing our first games and we're like, how come every time my infantry goes off to do something, they fail a morale test? <laughs> because like we're like, now I'm playing with ten gargoyles and they've flown across the table. Why are they leadership four or five or whatever they yeah. are? <laughs> Tyranids don't have good leadership. Yeah, what I did most of the time was make sure, well, if it was warriors or swarm lord, fine. I'm like sitting on nines and tens. But the raveners, what I was doing was using the Kraken's stratagem to specifically move 20 and be like, okay, I'm one inch away from you. I don't care if I go half. <laughs> and then the big one was the, I have the drill squad with acolytes. Uh -huh. uh, and I had given them the spell so they were with three attacks apiece. And then they failed their leadership and can't charge entity strike. And if they make that charge, they steal the objective and start doing a bunch of havoc early on and that's the, that's the game. But wow. Failed the leadership test. It was a one point game, right? right. So that charge seals the deal. Wow. What do you think you would do, again, do differently if you had to, have, have to do that game over again? I'm not sure there's a whole lot I can do differently. Um, you think you played I, it about as good as you could? I took a Harpy as fun because we're here, and I think the Harpies are still good. Um, my biggest fear for shooting against the Harpy was Tau and Eldar, and they both just got hit really hard specifically to their shooting. Mm -hmm. I went, oh, maybe it's time to try it out. Um, and then... Uh, was like literally obviously like the worst pick I could possibly have against his list. It's nothing but shooting that can just scoop the harpy turn one. Um, but maybe some different terrain hooks me up a little bit. Um, maybe one more. I think it would, I don't even, I think on that specific scenario, there's not anything I can do differently. It just might be a somewhat different game based on some changes in terrain and uh, mission. Okay. Uh, right. Six objective mission might have hooked me up. Okay. So, a lot of people that play Tyranids, I think, are going to have a lot of problems in the Chaos Knights. Because you're, so. you're not the average player, and neither is Michael. So, this is a pretty high level game that you guys were playing. What would you say, what would you say to Tyranids players out there about that particular matchup? Do we need to make changes to our lists? Is it just, um, is it just bad? Like, what do you think? I do kind of think that Josh's list, that is very monster heavy. Yeah. Actually Super shooting. Balanced. It's a Chronos list. Yeah. yeah. So his whole army is sitting on T7. Which mm -hmm. Now, of course, that horde of strength six shooting is actually quite poor. Um, okay. All the Carnifexes are sitting on two plus saves. So he's still got saves against everything. And all you got to do is target down the couple of war dogs that have the Meltas. And okay. now it's going to be a nightmare to kill off all the Tyranid stuff. 
Um, I think that list does a lot better into his. Okay. But it's not what I want to play. No. I didn't. Pl I didn't play Crusher because I'm not a monsters player. I didn't play anything like that. I wish I could still run my horde, and that's why I'm trying forces now because it gets me like 30 infantry models. Right. Like on 32s and 20s. Well, and deep striking for free right now is huge value mm -hmm. because you, because we don't have hardly any CP I took at the start of the game. Lines and score 12 on it. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Because what's he gonna do? He's gonna screen out your deployment zone. <laughs> oh. Against five acolytes, that seems like a not a thing. Yeah. All right. So, what do you think? We haven't gotten to talk to you about the nids changes in general. You were you were working when they all came out. Mm -hmm. So let's let's talk first about uh, let's see what order that it happened in. Let's talk first about losing the secondaries, losing to the last and strangle. Okay. So losing those obviously hurt a lot, but I get it. A lot of armies were crutching on it, and it's like Tyranids. Yeah, it's not a particularly interesting set of. Uh, secondaries. Okay. I sit on my side of the board, I wave at you, I get all my points, there's right. not much you can do about it. Um, so I am kind of glad that they're gone in general. Um, I, there's a couple in there that bug me that went away, like Retrieve Teleport Homers, I don't know why that doesn't exist anymore. Um, that one hurts the forces list a bit. But yeah, I mean, it just meant that it's why I'm, I'm teching into forces now, because I don't think their secondary game is good, because the Tyranid secondaries have always been garbage. Yeah. Um, so and they didn't get buffed when they rewrote a whole bunch of secondaries? No. Okay. Um, very, very slightly, but it's still just not very good. So the forces list just instantly opens up, like, behind enemy lines, Nackman data, all these other things that are great, and I think that really helps the army a lot. Okay. Uh, then, let's see, that's the first thing, that, that was, like, day one of nerfs. Yep. <laughs> then day two of nerfs was points. Mm -hmm. What are the thing? What are the point things that you think were the most painful? Um... A lot of it was mild, right? It wasn't too bad. Warriors, Raveners hurts a little bit, but it's not the worst thing in the world. And they obviously needed it. And they were under I'm not defending them. Right. Um, Swarmlord going up was a little interesting. No one was running him, but that, again, that's just a bit of future-proofing because mm -hmm. everyone was just taking tyrants because they were better. Um, Maliceptor is only ever going to be a one-of, which is fine. 220 is still a fine points for him. You're just not taking three. Right. Um, Harpy got I, I love how many times we're going to nerf the Malice Scepter. Like, oh, yeah. It's already like... <laughs> like in the, in the previous fact, it, he was the main target. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, like key specific things just to lock him out of certain synergies. Like just him to get out of here. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we had uh, the Harpy nerf, which was pretty substantial, but also a very good data sheet. Um, Charn effects has went up. Doesn't affect me. I've been playing them. <laughs> Um, basically, Josh's list lost an exocrine. It's basically how yeah. the points affected him. Yeah, I think the points changes were fine. I think they were pretty appropriate. Okay. So then the third set of changes was the nerfs from the data slate. Yes. And so talk to us about, about how, you, how those felt. To you. <laughs> They're all dumb. Every <laughs> last one of them. They are boneheaded, ridiculous rules changes. Again, I don't mind Terrence getting nerfs, but don't take away the flavor. Don't take away the fun. Like, hey, by the way... Unlike every single other army in the game, if your warlord dies, all your rules don't work. Yeah, like what? What? <laughs> Why? Like, oh yeah, man. Sorry, uh, this dude died. You don't get to be CSM anymore. <laughs> that sucks. Oh, oh, let's do that. Okay, so the games that aren't finished, we can go back to them now. We are, we are no longer, we are no longer broken. So that's great. Okay. Um, we're gonna see if we have commentators. Uh, yeah. It's the they, last dregs. Like, yeah. Anthony has this one in the bag, but Josh is making a valiant effort of it. There's not a lot of left on the table. This was. This looks like a really, really close game where secondaries may have uh, bit. Uh, has Has Anthony been able to keep his characters alive? Mm -hmm. Uh, not really, but he only didn't have enough to score really any points on assassinate anyone. Ah, uh, so it was just a bad pick. Yep. Well, I mean, he, he had no better pick. There aren't really a lot of good picks against Anthony's army, so. Oh, no, for sure. I was just, yeah. Okay, so let's uh, head over to the Pound Patrol. I think that game was already wrapped up. It is already wrapped up. It's just done, guys. Michael won, Michael won by a point seventy-two seventy-one. Yeah. I was They were told. just commentating on it, yep. I missed that. And then Steve beat yep. Chuck. Uh... Seventy forty one, but All right, Chuck yeah, made it a valiant effort hill for Chuck. Um, yeah, 
So what what do we have left here? Let's take stock. There looks like there's at least some uh, model up on the upper left objective that is Harlequins esque. I can't tell you if that's a, a injured troop unit or a that's character. That's an upper left. They skipped the hive timer. Uh, all right. Well, there's something hanging out there. Test test. test. Uh, it's a spore mine, possibly. I can't. I don't know. Yeah. I know it's Josh's. That's all I know. All right, it's a it, it's a nid thing. Um, midfield, we've got a Carnifex and a few more uh, troops. Uh, we've got uh, a Hive Tyrant on bottom right, and we've got a Tyrannocyte. I think that's the Shadow Seer and the Void Weavers in bottom left. Uh, those Void Weavers being alive this late in the game, I think, is a big deal. It is for sure. All right, so. Points wise, Anthony's struggling on primary, but he's got that secondary game going pretty well. And it's it's the opposite for Josh. Josh is running the points up on the primary, struggling with the secondaries. There's not a lot so of let's... secondaries that Anthony's uh, army gives up. So we had a, yeah. a tough road before the game started. Yeah, yeah. Like we were talking before the game started, he didn't have a great uh, set of secondaries to choose there. Um, looks like we're moving into Anthony's turn. Those Void Weavers are probably falling back from that Tyrannocyte along with the Shadow Seer. So I'm going to guess they're going to be able to, to boop that pretty well. Um, if that's where their shooting wants to go. Uh, looks like we maybe got an advance roll going on of some sort. Uh, there we go. All right. So it looks like we're going to try and do a little bit more movement here. So that is a uh, troop master that moved up there. So all right, that is a troop center. master that is moving from the upper left objective to the center objective. Uh, I think we're going to see maybe uh, some split fire, some shots going at that Carnifex midfield, some shots going at the Tyrannocyte in the back. Try to clear those up because then at that point, I think that basically just leaves Josh uh, with that uh, Tyrannifex on that lower right objective. Sorry, I was shooing away people who were talking very enthusiastically about the new changes to the game. <laughs> Couldn't hear. How dare they be excited? I know. Mitch. How dare they have enthusiasm? You tell them that is to not what this event is about. Out of somber attitude. Yes, this is not this. This event brings no joy. Humbug. Correct. All right, what do we got going on here? Let's check in on chat. Chat, how you doing? How is chat? Was the Death Watch uh, info all you wanted? Did, did did it live up to the hype? They 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 did get a Dan gave a thanks for the Death Watch info. Uh, Steve Hooten says, "Was the three CP not a huge hit into the War Dog Army with the new rules?" Um, I'm not super familiar with that build, Mitch. Do you know what he's talking about? Um, I think he's just saying that doesn't the War Dog Army struggle for CP at the, um once it's reduced? I don't think so because the War Dog Army is just a stat check. It's just like okay, cool. It 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 just keeps running at it, it's the uh it, it is it's the Zap Brannigan of lists. It's just going to keep sending kill bots until you hit the maximum number of kill bots you can kill, or or yep. you know like they're just going to keep running at you. There, there's so many of them. It's like, yeah, you take down this one, but it hurt you. And then the next one, and then the next one. But after ten, the last three are like, cool, man. Um, like, they're for it's a grind. Like, it, you can beat them by playing the mission and blocking them out. Um, we saw Alex keep it really tight with a list that has nowhere near the horsepower to just like tank all those immediately. He can't just kill them at will. He has to set it up. And he, we're going to be getting yeah. more details about that um, after this game wraps up. Um, which uh, I think we are only one turn away. Yep, we are getting close. But it uh, looks like Peter Werner, a.k.a. Decock Peter, is keeping an eye on chat for us. Thank Man, you, Peter. Such an unfortunate you. pronouncing of his, of his handle. <laughs> I'm just I'm I'm a, I'm referring because there's there's so many Peters in the community that I needed to define which Peter it was. Oh, yeah. all right. You know, I'm hungry all when right. I see people pushing army cases on carts and I'm like, oh, pizzas. Yeah, they should give you pizza. 
You can't demand service. Come on. Someone's got to deliver Mitch food. Someone. Someone at the event. Mitch. Mitch is hungry. He's going on seven hours of rest in the last 14 days. Give him food. Uh, like, stop stalking me, Seth. You're not allowed to know the exact number. I told you to be vaguer, so it I, so I, weird. I, I, I'm not stalking. I just have a I know, well-placed I, informant. I know you're not stalking. It's enthusiastic pursuit. But do, sometimes when we have too much enthusiasm, our pursuits become crimes. We've been over this. We had a okay, whole, fine. like, picture Sorry, graph. Mitch. Like, no, that's fine. I appreciate you. Uh, so, yeah, it is 6 CP starting now, Aesthetics Deluxe. I mean, does that list burn that much CP? I mean, it can. Like, like any list can burn CP, but that's the whole thing is it's like, I got good guns. I spent, I, like, you don't have as many upgrades and stuff, but I don't think that it really cares. It's just, like, I murder good. You murder good? Do you know murder good as I murder? Like, it's really what it does. Yeah. Well, they, someone brought, like, six boxes of cookies, so I've just been eating sugar, and I need some protein. That's really what's going on here. And we get some bacon on top of the cookies. That, that probably was an option. It is, it is well, the Pacific Northwest. Protein, buddy. All right, what do we got going on here? Anthony's threatening with dice. He's threatening it, Josh. It's a very threatening gesture. I think they're they're just resolving how many saves Josh needs to take. <laughs> All right. Well, whatever that was, it didn't look particularly good. No. I think I think Josh right, just think experienced just damage. Josh just experienced clowns doing clown things. Yep. That's really what I think is what happened there. Does it? Oh, I think I think we have some death throws. Yep. Yeah, that carnifex in the middle just did. Just blew up. Yeah, but he rolled the six. Oh Ooh, yeah, death throws. Love it. That's some assassinate oh, points, possibly. He did explode. Yep. Did Did he kill any characters? No, no character no. death. No characters killed. All right. So with that, um, I think we're seeing all the shuriken cannon fire here from those void weavers now. Um, guessing they're going at the terrain site. Yep. Terrain site target right now. All right. So he's got a fair few sixes, no fives or one five. It looks like. Um, I don't know how many wounds are left on that bad boy, but those sixes are probably going straight right now after the first string. Three wounds now. Down to three wounds. Uh, that's not a super. For the whatever yeah. that is over there. Solitaires or, or uh, shadow seers shooting. Yeah, that's it. Pop. Uh, looks like we're going to have some mortals. I think it's a mirage launcher. Here's what that thing carries. I don't know. Anthony rolls he dice fast. He does go for it. There is no... Anthony has no chill. It's dead. All right. So three mortals takes that bad boy down. That, uh, if, if Anthony wasn't maxed on, uh, bring it down, that should do it because that's another three or four. Oh, yeah. I right would be there. shocked if he wasn't. Yeah. So that'll, that'll put him in a pretty square position there. Um... Are we, uh, table boss pickles? Uh, what round are we in? It says Josh is turn four right now, but clearly Anthony's doing stuff. Yeah, so is bottom it bottom of four? four? All right. So Anthony is going to be in a pretty solid it's position, I think, to to at least get a two, if not three. Anthony is eating all uh, of Bagwell's five, ambition and hope to the go upper further. Right. I'm kidding. This is a pod game. He could totally be fine. Yeah. So I think Anthony's probably going to extend uh, his primary score here. And uh, with that being said, extend you, his Chuck's lead pretty significantly. Very interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Secondary points just there, Anthony. Very interesting. 
Oof, eight secondary points. That's a big, big swing. Yeah, Anthony's Anthony, despite being low on models, I think is pulling away score wise at this yeah. point. I don't know that Josh is gonna be able to make up that gap. Josh needed a bit more on primary. Um and and because I feel like secondary hasn't been totaled up, but I feel like he really just wasn't able to make warp patrol happen, it looks like. And engage didn't yeah, happen either. Only one time. Yeah. So that, that I, I feel I don't know what his round five primary score was. I haven't asked yet, so well, it's at the end. He's up to, he's up to, he's up to 32. No, Josh is scored right now. So oh. Up to 32 right now. Gotcha. Yeah, so we're, we're getting updated scores now. It's 4153 at the moment. But I'm, gonna get, I'm getting another score in a minute here. So it looks like Josh was able to get four more points on primary. That's the best he's going to do is a 32 on primary. Um, but he's going to, yeah, I, I don't see any mathematical path forward for him at this point. But they're playing for your entertainment. They're playing for the children. All right. Oh, boy. <laughs> Model's going flying. Well, what do we have coming up next? Uh, I'm looking ahead at the schedule. Uh, next, uh, you guys are going to have Dustin Henshaw and Skari taking over as the commentary team. Uh, they are a great combo. Um, and then it looks like we should have a couple more pod games going on. We have Jesse Sells, uh, who, if you remember, just recently won the BAO, uh, which was the event that his late roommate, Jeff Robinson, had won previously. So that was a really good uh, great feel good, good for story. Jesse. It was a, a really uh, significant win for him because of that. He's taking on the boy king himself, John Lennon. Um, I know both of these individuals love running some Sisters of Battle, so we might have a Sister Mirror there. I'm not sure. We'll have to see what those lists are. Um, moving into our uh, second uh, table for that particular time, um, we have Tyler Bortel, uh, the cocky young upstart Tyranid player, taking on the veteran, the old man himself, Sean Naden. Uh, that should be an interesting game because I believe Sean's playing Orcs. Tyler always going to be playing Nids or Forces. Um, and then moving on down, it looks like our last game for that time slot is Noah Bedom, uh, probably playing his Tau. And then Josh uh, Schultz. No, uh, uh, he I will have pivoted I, over to Imperial Knights, uh, a list designed um, by John Lennon. Uh, his Tau. Noah, he, Noah, left, Noah left Tau. He okay. played one game with a new point. He went, this is not okay. And then he's like, nope, I'm playing Knights. That was last night. That's how crazy. Literally that's why hit. no one has access to list because everything changed because of just because everyone was trying to readjust to, to the like the new the new world, the new order of things. Yeah, and I think I have Josh's list here too. Josh is now running. Uh, he's running himself some. Okay. That uh, I see GSC. Send it to me. Is it all GSC? It is. We are getting a link GSC. to all the lists. We will have a hyperlink. Apparently, I am being told we have a link now. So, guys. All right. Breaking news. Unfortunately, I'm pretty sure I can only post it on Twitch, so someone will have to copy it and post it in the YouTube uh, chat for me. I can do that. Great. Thank you. That is, that is, need to see the link. Oh, uh, yeah, I can make that work. I mean, just post it. Whenever you post it on Twitch, I can copy it over. Yeah, no, so, I know. I have to, I have to get there. Uh, Mitch and technology. It's a great combo, folks. It actually is. The technology likes me. Because you have a big hammer, right? Uh, no, I just, I don't know. I, God loves an idiot. Who knows? Um, let's so see final here. scores are 76 to 43 on the Nids versus Harlequin. Nice. 76 to 43 86 is your final versus score? 53 with, point, with paint. Oh, yeah. That, sorry. 86 to 53 with paint uh, is your final score for uh, Harlequins versus Nids with Anthony taking the win. There uh, is the hyperlink. Copying. The hyperlink is in Twitch. And now, boom, it is in YouTube. Okay, guys. So 
We are wrapping up for the moment. I'm going to sw switch back over to chairs. Where we will have okay. Colin and someone talking. Uh, Alex, finish your conversation about uh, yeah. NIDS with them. And I am going to leave you boys here. Uh, folks, uh, have a great weekend. Keep oh, watching no, the stream. Fine. Keep supporting the stream. Don't forget to donate. Uh, and until next time, have a good wah. Yeah. Okay, guys. So I'm going to switch it on over. Thank you so much. Remember, donate, 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 charityhammer.com. If you, if you don't donate, are you really helping sick children in hospitals? I don't know. Maybe. But we'll find out. Okay. Back over to Colin. Are we live? Yeah. Okay. Hi. So Alex and I were just, you know, sitting here. We were pausing on our Tyranid conversation because we know we gave you a lot to digest. So we had to let you go watch some 40K. Think about all the things that Alex said. Now I feel like you should go back to complaining about the data slate changes. Mm -hmm. Okay. These are the only real complaints I have. Points, fine. Missions, whatever. kind of hits everyone. But yeah, the ones that they did for the Tyranid data slate just don't make it make a sense to me. So... We've got yeah, I know. I don't, your warlord dies and your synaptic comparatives don't work, which is a penalty that no other army in the game has. Uh -huh. Don't understand why that exists. Uh, you had a win rate that no one else in the army had to, in the game into Ted 2, by the way. <laughs> <So>? <laughs> Everyone has their time in the sun. Um, Not unless, tyrannous. Unless you're guard. Yeah, that's true. Unless you're guard. <laughs> or Chaos Demons. And then uh, what was the other changes that they had? It was the warlord trait, or warlord dies, you lose. You have to set areas. your. You have to set your thing. We're literally yeah. on stream. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Great. We you 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 have to set your your yeah. special yeah. thing. So the, so the Tyrannid fluff, fluffy thing, that is like very in line with how Tyrannids should function got taken away. Yeah. So now you just pick a trait. So everyone's gonna pick plus one to charge. Yeah. Yeah. All the time. It's all so we're all super boring now. Uh huh. And then what's the third one now? This is lack of sleep, people. you know what? Warlord. Oh god. Yeah, oh man. This is what four hours of sleep will do, people. Tyler, what's the other data slide change for Nids? The more adaptive Hive Tyrant has to be the Warlord, the Warlord has to be alive to do with Right. Hive Tyrant has to be the Warlord as well. Has to be the Warlord. So your Flyer that you want to use, you don't want to use because he'll die and then you lose your synaptic imperatives. It's dumb. Okay. <laughs> so when you play Forces, do you just not have that guy be your Warlord? Oh, he has to be your Warlord. He has to be your Warlord, but I don't care about losing him anymore because I don't get synaptic imperatives. Oh, fair enough. In Forces. Right. Yeah. Okay, so... Let's talk about the games that are about to happen. That'll oh, be what fun. do we got coming up? Yeah. So it is noon, which means that we are going to have on stream one, Sean Naden versus Tyler Bortel. Oh, that's going to be fun. Tyler Bortel is going to play updated nids, just nids, horses, yeah, we... and Sean's playing goths. Yeah, that's going to be much punching. Are you making the ice yourself or like, <laughs> what's going on over there? <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, that'll be a really fun, good technical game. That'll yeah, they're playing Death and Zeal, so okay. it's going to be a lot of crumping in the middle of the table for the orcs and the and the nerd. So that should be interesting. I'm really interested to see Tyler adapt his playstyle because he was the most to the last of all of my friends. Mm. He's been doing to the last in every list for like the whole time I've known him. So uh, it'll be interesting to see him adapt uh, to that to that for sure. Yeah. Okay, then on table two, we've got Noah Badome playing Imperial Knights, including the I ignore cover, I ignore line of sight and spit mortals at you guy, mm -hmm. who I think is rude. Mm -hmm. um, and he Agreed. is playing against Josh Schutz, who's playing Mono Gene Stealer Colt. What a Chad. So, okay, the last two matchups, I discussed and helped build Tyler's list. And I helped discuss and build Josh's list last night, so I'm in, I'm vested in this. Okay. <laughs> what do you think, Mono Gene Stealer Colt? Into uh... Uh, I think Josh is gonna have a really bad side. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's Twisted Helix, so it's really fast. He might be able to do some cool move block stuff. He's gonna have to play really well. To I mean, this is the way it always works with knights. Knights goes. Can you deal with this many T8 wounds? I don't know. Does he have big big like saw units that can go into the knights and kill them? Uh, is it? He does. I think he has two. Um, the question, though, is does he have... 
Is it Imperial Knights or Chaos Knights? Imperial Knights. Okay, so we can actually charge those. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah, it's okay, that's better then. Yeah, that is better. And then the other game that we didn't talk about, it's very hard to use this on the phone, I'll remember that for next year, <laughs> uh, is John Lennon and Jesse Sell both playing sisters. Oh, I mean, that's going to be fantastic. Yeah. Jesse explained to me that he's played like eight sisters mirrors, and in every single one of them, people are just like, oh, I had that rule wrong. Because the rules are so weirdly written, and there's so many of them, really? that in every mirror they're catching them, they're catching each other uh, on shenanigans. So yeah, it is a very complicated book. I, I I'm interested to find out if if Jesse catches the boy king himself on a rules mistake, because that would be. That. I hope now that you've mentioned it, it goes the other way, and John corrects Jesse on something, because that would be fantastic. That's less exciting for me. I like, I just in general, I feel like John being embarrassed is better than anyone else being embarrassed. I feel like just in general, right? I guess. I don't feel embarrassment, so it's hard to take this Ever? gauge. No. That explains a lot. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. So, the other games that are happening are not on this link that I have, so give me just a moment and I'll tell you the games that are happening off stream. I know that Mitchell is playing Custodes into J.K. Steiger's uh, Grey Knights. Okay. Which is game. some some chonky boys fighting each other. I know that's happening. Um, and then the fifth game, we have the the um, Zach and Fred game that was supposed to happen earlier is happening now. Okay. That's Zach is playing um, Thousand Sons and uh, Fred's playing Death Watch. So we have that okay. going on right now. And then there's another game that I'm not remembering. Oh, Hank is playing uh, Eldar into Paul Slanesh. That's oh, the other yeah, game I that's happening. Talking about that one. So, um, I have played Eldar into Slanesh recently. That is, game is not on stream for a reason. <laughs> That's fair. The, the Eldar go, or the Slanesh go, we're running! And then the Eldar go, half of you are dead. And then the Slanesh go, we're running! And the Eldar go, the other half of you have died. Mm -hmm. uh, they have some specific tech? Eldar hates Slanesh? Is yes, a it's, what, it's one CP play? for yeah, in-combat reroll hits and wounds. <laughs> <laughs> So they got Vengeance for Kadia in combat. Against Great. only Sinesh. And what does Slanesh get back against Eldar? Nothing? <laughs> a white flag. <laughs> <laughs> they get one relic sword that rerolls wounds. Yeah, if works. he had taken it, which if, of course he, he did. Take it beforehand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now what's interesting about this matchup is normally the Slanesh win by being fast. But Hank is literally playing... Uh, triple shining spear, Sam Hain. So his, nice. his so his his bikes go twenty two inches before charging. That's a fun list. Yeah, I yes. What both Sean Naden and I said to Hank is, you need to win all of your games because we both de de desperately want this list to be good. Mm -hmm. Like I will happily play three advanced and charging shining spear yeah. units. I got no problem playing that. That yeah. would be so fun. Yeah, I feel like Nane's pretty invested on that one as well because remember his LBO list like twenty nineteen or whatever was like. 16 Harlequin bikes and 16 Shining Spears. Uh -huh. It was just like, yeah. oh, you got charged by 30 bikes on turn one. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Oh. Get bent. Well, and the, the thing about Shining Spears that people aren't thinking about is that they shoot and punch, both yeah. with high AP. Yeah. So you go, and you get to do it on the advance as well. So they go flying up 22 inches, and they're like, we shoot this thing with Shuriken, we throw our spears at this thing, and then we charge this thing over here. It's a lot of damage. Yeah, and if you put Fortune on one of those... Shining Spear Squads, it's surprisingly durable. Yes. It's like three plus annoying plus, to kill, yeah. Minus one to hit if you're yep. shooting at it. Yep. Um, and then five up feeling no pain. Five up feeling no pain, three, three wounds apiece? Or no, they're, they're, they're uh, only two wounds apiece. But piece. the Autark is... The Autark has four wounds because he's upgraded. Yeah, he's beefy boy. And and he has a strength eight weapon as well, so... Yeah. Surprise! That's super cool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Nobody sees that one coming. His arms are about this big around. Why is he hitting me for strength eight? <laughs> yeah, because it's called a laser lance. It's not called a blunt lance. That's true. His strength does not matter when you have a laser. <laughs> You're an engineer. You should know this. Lasers yeah. make everything better. That's a, yeah, that's a very true statement. Lasers yeah. do make everything better. <laughs> I don't know how a laser lance works. I don't know what's involved. No, I mean, it's probably just a lightsaber, but for, like, you know, purposes, <laughs> yeah. it's not called that. One of my favorite uh, things about Eldar currently is everyone's kit bashing warp spiders, which they should because the models are older than many of the people that are here. Mm -hmm. But they're, they're kit bashing warp spiders onto flight stands. And I keep saying to people, but they don't fly. Yeah. They warp. It's yeah. in their name. They like, bounce from place to place. Yeah, they don't. Like, why are your warp spiders in the air? Did someone drop them? 
Yeah. Like, are they? I think if you come show up with flight bases, we should include like a D and D style fall damage. Yeah, that's right. They, they, they thought they were warping to like a landing yeah. spot, and they actually warp like ten feet up in the air and went. Ah! I believe that they used to have scatter dice at the end of their warp. Which, they did, which I I thoroughly enjoy the the and chaos of. I remember it used to no. be that it was like. 2d6 for your advance, but if you rolled doubles, some guy just got like stuck in a wall. Yeah. Like he didn't warp into an open area, he warped into material and died. That's a crappy job. I don't I don't know. I don't want to go to military school and have them be like, you <laughs> you're gonna be a teleporting guy. And by the way, it's very dangerous. <laughs> I'm gonna be Can like, you imagine if your technology was that advanced <laughs> that you can traverse the stars and like teleport through the warp, but you can't teleport 20 feet without like <laughs> exploding into the immaterium? I like how many plasma guns kill people in the future. Mm-hmm. Like, we haven't figured out how to vent the heat out of this gun. Yeah. So it's just going to kill some of our troops, and that's fine. Yeah. Unless there's a sergeant, unless they have a leader nearby, he'll instruct on them on how to shoot it if correctly. If it's Imperial Guard, it makes sense. It is more work, <laughs> yes. more money, yeah. more time invested. And they don't care about guardsmen. Yeah, to, no. to actually make the guns work properly than it is to just train a new guardsman or throw another one yeah. out on the battle. <laughs> but like, but like when the the chaos game that they played yesterday, where Tyler Bortel's uh, Terminators all killed themselves by rolling ones on plasma, you're like, this is not mm. the way the game should work. Yeah, it's supposed to be like this sanctified <laughs> holy relic <laughs> yeah. on some guy that's like virtually unkillable. Yeah. And it, oh, my hand got hot. <laughs> Ah! <laughs> I like. I don't know if he spent Veterans of the Long War on that attack, but I hope he did because I like the idea that those guys were wicked, crazy, old, and experienced. Yeah, and then they're like, old. "Oh, damn!" and they did. <laughs> I. I mean, at that point, you have to imagine they were just like suddenly had an attack of guilty conscience, and they were like, "I can't take it anymore." <laughs> What if he is the true emperor? <laughs> I've been evil for 10,000 years. <laughs> Wait, are we the baddies? <laughs> I love that sketch. Yeah, I love that. Okay, I feel like we've gotten a little off topic we from competitive rambled. 40K. We may have rambled a little bit. Um, we don't need to talk about flamers killing planes, which is my, one of my favorite um, rules don't have to make sense. That's right. Also, planes are bad for the most part. Most of them. Yeah. I'm experimenting with a harpy right now. Is it fun? Uh, not in the first game I just played. <laughs> no, your your experiment so far is short on data. Yes, not when my opponent has 108 shots at 36 inch range. Yeah. All right, so we're going to go live on the games in just about probably five minutes here. Uh, and we're, we'll have Dustin Henshaw doing commentary, which is a person hey. you and I both really enjoy. Yes, we both very much like Dustin Henshaw. I met him at Ken Hammer Team, the Ken Hammer Team. You'll get there. Can Hammer team tournament. I met him there too, but this year. Oh, I mean, well, I I've, like that. I've talked to him a bunch online, but so person. we were playing. It's differential scoring, and they paired me into him, and I was playing an Eldar gun line, and he had a bike focused GSC army, and I played both armies, and I looked at his list and said, "Oh well, I, I will just table this. This is not. They should not have paired this guy into me." And Dustin happily deployed all of his units behind a wall at the back of his deployment zone, and just didn't engage with me and played me and made me not get twenty out. Team tif- differential scoring, man. That's the way. And it goes. his attitude during that game was amazing. Mm-hmm. He's like, "I bet you thought I was going to come at you. I'm not. Yep. I'm no. You're playing your own game over there, Aldar people. Yeah. I can't win against that. I'm over here. <laughs> like, yep. It Run was away. a really fun game. He's a great guy. So he'll. I've also heard he's a fantastic commentator. I've heard. I've heard that he does really great commentary. Mm-hmm. So uh, that'll be great. And I don't know who he has with him. Do we know who he has with him? Sorry, Josh and Scary. Oh, Josh and Scary. Okay. Which Josh? What Josh? Yeah. Somebody's Josh. Josh. Fair enough. That's fine. Same I don't. Logo as Justin. Okay, great. Mm-hmm. And Scary as well. The Archon yeah, who, himself. Who knows that guy? No, nobody knows him in this. In the only, circles. the only forty k famous Canadian is that who that who that Scary? Yeah. Okay. I think he's probably the most well known Canadian forty k player. Oh, he must be. Well, Falcon. Yeah, <laughs> player. Fair. Is Falcon really a player? <laughs> Falcon's more of a community icon. Yes. Yes. All right, so how are the games looking? Are they getting deployed over there? They are starting. Okay, well, maybe we'll talk for a little while longer then, because that doesn't sound like great television. No. All right, so who do you play next? Do you know? Uh, I play Tyranid Mirror, so I'm playing uh, Trimble next. This will be the third time we've played. Okay. How's, how's the first two times gone? Uh, first one was 
uh, Grey Knights at peak power versus just barely gotten Octarius uh, Vugs. Oh, and you played like a bonehead? That uh, one? No, he played like a bonehead. Okay. And then went first. And it just hooked him up. <laughs> I was like, all right. Yeah, and GG. The second time we played, uh, we played actually a pretty good game. Uh, that was Nids versus Nids at Seattle uh, at the Games Workshop. Open. Yeah, uh-huh. And then that was a good game. And then we'll play today, and we'll see what happens. It's going to be fun. All right. He's playing a much different style than I am. He's very warrior-heavy Leviathan. And I'm like, I'm like full down the jank tree. So. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, I don't know... How how many nids are going to make it to the top eight at this point? We had hopefully we, not a ton. We cause... had two. We've had two nids lose already. So just to update you guys on what's going on, we had to change the tournament format because of drops and getting rules late and everything else. So what we're doing is an RTT right now with the twenty people that are here playing in the tournament. Uh, there's two pods of six, two pods of four. They're all playing three games today, and it alternates. Uh, pods A and B are were first at six a.m. this morning. Then C and D played, and then we're rotating back and forth. So now A and B are playing again, because you're at C and D, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. A and B are playing again. Uh, we, and then for each po each section, there's five games. Three of them are going to be on stream. Two are not going to be. I did that. I chose. So if you get mad about that, it's all my fault. Um, it was midnight, and I was blitzed tired, and I was just trying to pick which games would be the most entertaining. Mm -hmm. um, like, I, like, nobody needed to see John Lennon play Sisters and Two Slaneshi Demons. The funny thing about that game is that that was the first tournament game we, we showed last year was John Lennon playing Sisters into Paul Slanesh. Oh, yeah. And they got paired again, and John said, here's what's happened since last year. My army has gotten better rules and cheaper point costs, and he's gotten nothing. Yeah. <laughs> they actually had a pretty good game because the first turn, John couldn't hit, couldn't kill anything. Just mm -hmm. He's just like, well, I'm trying. Happen. But it's just, you know, you have invuls, and I have to hit and wound you, and it's just not working out. Yeah. So, um, anyway, so games like that, some of the games are not on stream. Uh, but we've got almost all of them on stream. And remember, guys, the big thing here is that from this point through the rest of Charity Hammer, which is 60 hours, something like that. Maybe not that much. 50 hours, 50 something hours. <laughs> uh, so, uh, far off look into the <laughs> yeah. distance. So, uh, Charity Hammer ends in 51 hours. There you go. So, in 51 hours from now, we'll be done. But in the meantime, we are only doing new rules now. Yep. All new rules. Points, missions, everything. Some of the best players in the world are here. They're making lists in real time and playing them into each other. I made my GT list last night at 3.40 in the morning. Yeah. I Why not? To, I had to revamp what I was doing to the point where... I literally finished the list, and I went, uh, okay, so this list would really appreciate a turn of 5 plus and vulnerable save. Put the zoanthropes in, put my phone on the charger, put my head down on the pillow and go, I'm playing forces, that doesn't work, I have to take the zoanthropes out. <sighs> <laughs> like, starting from scratch again. I think it was two nights ago where I was laying in bed, and I had done everything you have to do to go to bed, right? Mm -hmm. I've taken my meds. The fan is turned on, so Stephanie's got the white noise. Everything's turned off in the house. The dogs are asleep. I'm in bed. My CPAP is on. I'm trying to go to sleep. And my brain goes, you didn't set an alarm and Charity Hammer starts tomorrow morning. <laughs> and I look at my phone, and I had not set an alarm. Oh, my goodness. And I'm like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> and we started it. And I, I had started at 7 a.m. on that day. So, like, I would not have been awake. Yeah. I would have woken up at like 7.30 probably and been like, oh, damn. Yeah. So I'm really glad that was the case. And then last night I was trying to go to sleep and like, and I was like, oh, yeah, there's like four things I didn't do. Okay, fine. I'll do the things. Yeah. Uh, so anyways, it's, uh, we're tired. We're a lot short, we're much shorthanded from the amount of people that were supposed to be here. So people are playing like crazy to give you guys the entertainment. If you guys could do us a favor, we've already asked you to donate a lot. We're going to keep asking you to donate. You need to donate. The kids need it. We're way far from our goal. We need you. I have thousands of dollars of stuff left to give away. Seriously. And you can win it. You just have to donate. The other thing I need you to do is I need you to go to your Facebook, to your Twitter, to your Reddit, to your Discord, <laughs> smoke signals, carrier pigeons, however you communicate with your gamer friends. I need you to tell them this is happening. If your friends are into competitive 40K, there's nothing better happening right now than what we have going on right here. It is... It's Friday. There aren't even tournaments started yet. Yeah, we are literally playing all of the new stuff at an incredibly high level, and we have commentary happening over it. So, 
Tune in, enjoy yourself, find people, donate, please, and then absolutely get your friends to watch. Uh, we are, we are, you know, putting a lot of effort into here, and that's the way that you can help. So we'd really appreciate that. Uh, are the commentary are the commentators ready for us, Billy? Commentators are ready. All right, guys, we're going to hand you off to the sisters' mirror uh, with your hosts, Dustin Henshaw, Scary, the Archon himself, and somebody named Josh. <laughs> Please have a wonderful time. We'll talk to you guys soon. And cool. hello, everyone. Welcome to Charity Hammer Round Fight. Let's go. Excited. We're excited. I had some high praise from Colin and Alex, so I have a lot to love to now. They didn't really talk about you much, Scary, because nobody knows you. But, nobody knows uh, and then, who I am or what I do. But hello, absolutely no. your Dustin. What's going on? Hi, how's it going? It's going good. Going good. And we also have some guys, Josh, with us, too, who is going to be joining yeah, us. I, to I, help I, the, you, you go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just a guy named Josh. That's that's all I am. That's hello, exactly. That's all. We just needed Josh? another guy named Josh. There's one on You're not there's one on the street. Joshing me, are you? Wow. Okay. This is what you have to look forward to for the next three hours, guys. Oh, it, is, man. it is dad jokes <laughs> and commentary of what we hope to be some pretty awesome games. And they should be because we have some great games coming up for you. We have, who is this now? We have John, oh yeah, the sister's mirror. John Lennon bringing his yes. sisters, Buddy Rose sisters, because yep. he loves his sisters, against Jesse. And... For those of you that are watching this and know me, it's it's no, it's not it's not Stutter Scrub Jesse. It is a much better Jesse, a much much better Jesse. <laughs> I, had to, I had I had to throw that out there because we had to. Now I'm trying to find the list in here. Do you have Do you have? Uh, one so of them I've got there? I've got lists. I've got uh, a conglomeration got of lists in a large. Um, you have Lennon's I, I, list. I found okay, Lennon's, me, so you find Jesse. Let me see if I find Jesse's list. Um, cool. I found Lennon's as well. I just. <laughs> like but why don't we go through Lennon's Sisters of Battle list, fellow Art of War coach, John the Man, Boy Wonder. John Lennon. the Legend Lennon? Yes. <laughs> Actually, was John Legend? Uh, John Legend. There we go. Ooh, We're gonna, you know what? That's going to catch on. That's going to catch on. You be, where were you at Charity Hammer when John Legend caught on? So the, le the Legends list right now, Bloody Rose Battalion. So he's going to have as many CP as he possibly can because his sisters do have a lot of good strats to use. He has the no as a Repentia Superior. He has Morven Vol because. What Morven order Vol is he? Is, uh, order. Yeah, what Maybe. conviction? Bloody Rose or. I just said Bloody Rose. You're not listening to me. I Do you, did you ignore me already? I decided. I to thought there was like a today. like a sub faction you were talking about that I just didn't know existed, and I was looking for Apparently, it. Apparently, I'm deaf. Yes. His bloody rose no, battalion and his his sub faction is no force org lot. That's what it is. That's that's the only thing that I see below it. So you're gonna see. We, we needed that. to represent Jesse here and just ignore you a little bit. Well, yeah, that's fair. But that's, that's definitely fair. So yes, Morvan Val. And Canoness with the Word of the Emperor, Blessed Blade, Blazing Ire, a chaplet, chaplet? Is that what it's called? It's actually a chaplet of sacrifice? A chaplet? Shallot? Oh, whatever. It's it's some kind of spice with a cup. Uh, and a plasma pistol. And then we got two sisters, two, two battle sister squads, just five each. Ten no novitiates. I've never even seen those before. What the they heck are, are those? incredible. They're like the ones that came out of the Kill Team box. And they have like oh, 50 that's... million close combat attacks. Right, that work really those well when guys. You do like mortal that's right. And stuff. I have roll, definitely, roll I've definitely that. seen them, and I've definitely fought against them, and they are definitely stupid. And they're yep. wow, are they cheap? Seventy five points yep. per ten. That sounds that sounds legit. All right, cool. Then there's a dogmatica with sigil, verse of holy piety, uh, chorus of spiritual fortitude, and then their hospitaler. Two by eight Repentia, one five Repentia, five Seraphim, ten Zephyrim, and another five Zephyrim with a pennant, and then a Castigator, and two by ten Retributors. One of them has a hand flamer, four multi Multa Simulacrum, two Sherebs. The other one is four multi Multa. So it just doesn't have the flamer in the second one. And then a Rhino, because you have Retributors. So, when well, that Repentia. does make sense. You know, yeah, you I mean, kind of need that. Right? Or novitiates. I mean, there's actually a lot of things you can put in there. It gets a lot of value yeah. out of that. In fact, I don't think the retributes would go in there. But no, you don't need to. Yeah, you, know, you could. You could uh, strategic reserve them if you wanted to, depending on like how many command points you were using. Of course, mm -hmm. with the uh, Sisters of Battle Miracle Dice, there's so many shenanigans you can do. Pre-game moves and auto charges yeah. out of Deep Strike and a whole bunch of stuff. However, yeah. the mirror match, like 
Let's take a look at Jesse's list, shall we? And yeah, see how similar, similar it is. List. Okay, so it is a battalion detachment of sisters of battle, order of the Bloody Rose. Oh, okay. See, you're fantastic. you're saying it differently than I did. That's why you were confused. I get it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I said it the right way. Then we the, have a whoa. Hospital. <laughs> just saying. Just saying. Just, just saying. saying. Yeah, okay. just I'm going saying. back to ignoring like, you. Let's take a look at Jesse's um, list. You shall. Oh, yeah, see how similar there is. Left himself excellent. Okay, so, it is so a then we have a Calanus of the battle uh, with order the blessed blade, of the bloody rose, the chaplet of sacrifice, oh, okay. see, you're... saint in the making, and the uh, blazing ire, as well as the word of the emperor as well. Then we have Celestine and her Gemini, and we have Morvan Fall with another warlord trait, the righteous rage, using some cool extra warlord traits and stuff which is neat uh three units of five battle sisters so no novitiates in this list a dogmata three paragon war suits with storm bolters and multi meltars and a warblade five repentia ten repentia a five strong or six strong unit of seraphim with some hand flamers six zephyrim six zephyrim and then Two mortifiers with heavy bolters and flails. Bit of a different list. Yeah, there's some yeah, it's... And there's there's also a retributor squad there too, right? Uh oh, it is. There is one. There's, there's more to that list. Keep reading. There's You're not more. done yet, Scary. Probably... Go, 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 go. But wait, there's more. Flamers. And I lied. It's actually multi meltas. Because why <laughs> would you? Now, <laughs> she did. Uh, they uh, Jesse did take. A combi flamer on the retribute superior to have access to the very fun trifecta uh, um, stratagem, which allows them to get plus one to wound, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it's uh, very it's cool. Good but against knights. So much yes, it's very good against knights. Mm-hmm. So there's and similar, a but they're different. Yes, yes. The, the, the one rhino just seems to be pretty stock now. I think for the so. While this is a mirror match, and they do have a lot of things that are similar, there are some differences that will make the matchup different, <laughs> luckily. Otherwise, it'll just be boring to watch, right? Because it's just the same list fight each other. What, what, who wants that? Who wants that? But we got some exciting stuff going on. Now, who do you think, in terms of the mirror match with their list, has the advantage here? Um, yeah, that's I, what I want to know. I think there's two things. I think each list has parts of it that are good into the mirror. Yep. So I, I'm a huge fan of Mortifiers. I think they're fantastic. I've played against many of them, and they're very annoying to take down. Mm-hmm. I do like the fact that Jesse's list has seems to have a little bit more so like MSU-style stuff. However, John's list has the Novitiates, and those into a mirror with their, like, I believe their Strength 4, are actually quite good at killing other Sisters of Battle, ironically. Yeah, the strength four is a big deal in the sisters matchup just because of the the, the toughest three everywhere, right? But there are some vehicles on both sides that'll kind of offset it. And when I say both sides, I mean mostly in Jesse's favor. Now, are those going to be better in this matchup or worse? Because I feel like they trade down technically in this matchup for the most part, right? Well, in terms of what do you think, Josh? (laughs) Uh... (laughs) That I, I don't I don't know if I'd say they trade down into this one. Well, the point the, costs are a lot a lot more favor of uh, the smaller units. So I mean, like one one like the Paragon Warsuit Squad, if they're gonna kill a Sister Squad, that's that's a lot less points. Like, what are they gonna be? Able, and okay. then the, the there's two because John has the two big Retributor squads. I think he can get some good uh, good value into actually killing some of the bigger things because. While Jesse has one of them, there's not as many good targets for multi multi shots on in John's list. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Now, no, do we know what mission we're playing? Uh, it looks like it. Oh, it's one it of the. Looks like Death and Deal, but it's it. Could it looks be. like I was gonna say it looks like Death and Deal, but it could be they had, they didn't move objectives, so it's not uh, uh, re- secure artifacts or recover secure artifacts. Yeah. Or something like that. That's, that mm-hmm. Or something like that. Yeah. So I think it's death and zeal. Let's say let's say it's death and zeal until somebody corrects us. And uh we're gonna go with that. I think that makes sense. So and then what I'm what I'm interested at this point is is how do these uh these different lists, how do they play into the secondaries that they've chosen here? Because we only have one different secondary between these two in a mirror matchup, which kind of makes sense, but do these different lists play into those one secondary uh those unique secondaries that they've chosen? 
So we have John has taken Banner here, and and Jesse's going for the the retrieve. I guess Nephilim data now. Yeah, Nephilim data now. So I mean, oh, and then John took defend the shrines, and Jesse took defend the shrine. So obviously Jesse has an advantage because he only need to defend one shrine, and you know John's has to defend multiple. Because that's that's how that works when they're worded that way, right? That's. <laughs> yeah, well, that, uh, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, I I missed I mean, that slight uh, that slight Jesse change. Jesse has a huge advantage. Only have to defend one of huge. them. Huge. And I am literally just stalling because I have to look up what that is. We have to. I have to keep all <laughs> defend the shrine. Defend the shrine is like the priority targets. It's essentially right. one of the objectives. You have to hold it, and you get three points. It's essentially like a souped up stranglehold. That's now pretty fantastic, before, which, I, which I love that, too, because with Stranglehold gone, right. all these secondary, like, codex-specific secondaries that are replacing Stranglehold but not quite as good are now awesome. Like They, they are, are yeah, really, awesome. <laughs> really good. So in order to um, appease all of your creative and inquisitive minds, let's read it, shall we? So Defend the Shrine, and by the way, this is for all of you... Um, Filthy casuals out there. I'm going to read. Ah, there it is. He's using a stutter scrub term. I love it. (laughs) (laughs) The location of a sacred shrine has been identified. Defend this holy tribute lest it be desecrated by the enemy. Although, how does that work in a mirror match? You know, they're both technically like pious, aren't they? And one of them are traitor sisters. One of them are traitor Eh, sisters. Fair enough. The alpha. I just I just pissed off every single fluffy sisters player that's listening (laughs) to this. It's the apostate. It's the apostate. 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 Or what is the age of apostasy all over it? All over again. Is that is that that how it works? I don't know. Apostasy. Apostasy. There was a the age of apathy. (laughs) If you select. No, that's our age. Oh, okay. During yeah, the resolve pre-battle ability step of the mission, select one objective marker on the battlefield that is not in your deployment zone to be the sacred shrine. If the only I objective marker which on the one battlefield is. is in your deployment zone, then this must be the sacred shrine. Now, before, <laughs> your opponent got to pick it. But now you get to pick it, which means it's definitely a lot easier to get than it was. At the okay, end of your so, turn... That's- you score three points if you control it with an Adeptus Ministorum unit from your army. And at the end of the battle, your op- if your opponent controls it, you lose three obje- points from this objective marker, from this objective. Wow. So, yeah, so it's, it's basically like priority objective. Points. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's priority like, objective. Now, yeah. if I'm circling right now, you guys can't see it because this is good radio that I'm doing right now, but I'm circling the center objective with my finger right now because that is going to be bloody. <laughs> yeah. there? Going to be yeah, yeah. bloody rose. Bl- bl- bloody, bloody rose. rose. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be bloody yeah, we all, we rose all bodies it. everywhere. No, I don't think everybody got it. There's no way everybody got it. Come on. Oh, that's fair. Rosebud. Rosebud. So yeah, the that middle objective is going to be interesting. There's going to be bodies all over it. Now, Banner versus Nephilim Data. Which one do you think has the advantage in this mission in this uh, Because of the right now? mission, because of the mission, I honestly feel Nephilim is more gonna be more That's consistent. what I'm leaning towards as well. Yeah. Yeah. The more I, I'm I agree. playing the more I'm playing a lot of these missions, like a lot of these missions have most of the objectives far away from you if you're playing like this style of deployment. And unless you have like forward deployers, like we saw earlier today, we had some gene stealers on an objective that could like raise a banner on an objective, mm-hmm. or some infiltrators that could raise a banner on an objective that wasn't in your deployment zone, like, yes, you can put them up as you get to them, but it sort of, like, still takes you a turn to move up and then set it up, and the units Mm -hmm. that put an objective down can't really do anything unless you're, like, a space marine with a stratagem or something like that. So it forces you to sort of spread out a lot to put up these banners, and you can only really have, like, one objective to put a banner on. Now, if you are, you can put multiple banners on through the course of the game, and with good planning, it's a very reliable way of getting points and you mm-hmm. don't need to like try and, you know, get your Nephilim data or use units that way. But if you get two Nephilims, you're getting four points minimum. That's like five turns for one objective with a banner, if that makes sense. And that's if nobody takes it away and doesn't threaten it and things like that. And then you put it in three table quarters, which is relatively easy with this deployment and you're getting eight points. Which, yes. in this mission, I feel like somebody who picks banners is going to get about 8 to 10 points, maybe. Right? Depending See, on how aggressive everybody gets. 
Yeah, that's that's actually the the difference maker here too. I think, and this is like this is just a credit to how good John is actually at this game. If you don't know who he is, you obviously don't watch much 40k or follow it because he is one of the best players in the world, basically. Uh, but anyway, enough enough uh, toting him right now. If you know, you know him, you know him. But banners right now in this mission, he should be able to easily get eight to ten points, like Scar was saying. Now Nephilim easily get eight points but the 12 points might be hard so that four points like that secondary could be the big decider in this game and obviously whoever has bottom turn is going to make a big difference too so that which is usually the case in uh, mirror matches in general so i think john taking the banner is actually a good play in terms of trying to deny jesse those extra points so he might be able to if he does end up going first he might even be able to keep that differential in his favor even with not having the bottom turn which could be a big deal it could be now if john does go second banners will benefit him because oh can yes just move on to objectives last turn clear objectives and get additional points that way so it yeah. is uh, you know a bit of a gamble it is going to make it spicy because it's not just a mirror match we have slightly different lists mm -hmm. and we have slightly different secondaries which will influence the way we play now the third one that both took is leap of faith with the changes to yeah. miracle dice this is a battle god. Their ability to get a miracle dice every player turn instead of every battle round, essentially. In addition to martyrdom or getting units killed or killing stuff. Now, I think both players have a decent chance at getting quite a few points with that secondary. Right. Now, I'm assuming, once again, I'm pointing at the screen because you guys can see it. But I'm assuming that Jesse would have taken the bottom right objective as his uh, leap of faith, and John would have taken the top left one because those ones seem to be easily defendable without getting shot at. Because I mean, I think those are—I I would assume those are obscuring, so it's safer for them to hold those and maybe even hold it on their turn and get the leap of faith even better. So the middle objective, while there's going to be bodies on it because people would want to try to at least take it sometimes, I don't even know yep. if they're going to start throwing too many things on it. To be honest. Yeah, who knows? I think it'll it, because it's at the end of your player turn, you know, you don't have to commit a lot to sort mm -hmm. of hold it. However, John will have to commit more onto it because he did take banners, which means he does. Ha if he wants to put up a banner on there, he needs to sort of hold that objective for multiple turns in order mm -hmm. to get the banner in addition to scoring his points, which does yeah. make mean that if Jesse wants to attack his shrine a lot heavy, more heavily, it'll reduce a banner on top of forcing John to put more stuff into protecting that shrine. Yeah, but the thing is, too, if he just wants to, like, throw... If John has the ability to kind of dictate some trades right now, because if he puts a unit in the middle and puts a banner up, Jesse has to put something on it in re in response to, in order to take down that banner. Otherwise, John's going to start getting more points than he is, should be expected to get, which means he's going to have to start sacrificing things. And does he have the the cheap units that he can keep sacrificing and trading with John to do that is the question. I, I totally understand what you mean. Now, I'm excited to see how this goes. So, Dustin, why don't you tell everybody watching at home why we are all watching Charity Hammer today? And because weekend, we and tomorrow, we all and love 40k and we all love kids and we want to make sure that they have uh, better experiences in the hospital. So this is all in in charity for a child's play, which is a a charity. I think it's a state's charity, isn't it? United States. Uh, it's uh, international, I believe. It does international, even better. Hospitals um, and right. uh, hospitals know, and uh, shelters, uh, uh, shelters, abuse shelters. Uh, abuse shelters for kids and to make sure that they have toys, video games, and make sure that they are. They get a better experience of going through a rough time in their lives, right? If you have kids and you've ever brought them to the hospital, you know how tough that is. So this is a charity to help them actually not enjoy it, but at least have a better experience in there. It is a great charity. They've been doing this for quite a while, and we want your support to do this. And there's also raffles being given off too. So it's not you're giving the charity, but you're also going to win some prizes maybe, you know? It's great. Getting nectared yeah, into awesome. some draws. The other thing with Child's Play is they also do uh, encourage the use of, of these uh, games, video games, toys, uh, to promote the healing aspects of it, both mentally and sometimes physically, uh, as children go through this. So it's it's not just to ease their time in the hospitals, but also to learn how to use those those aspects of our life in order to help heal. It's a, it's a wonderful thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. So if our table bosses can jump us to table number two, 
And we'll do a quick breakdown of that, and we'll hop back to this. Whoa, table. look at all that speed. Well, Man, they're on point here. Um, that is exactly what I call efficiency. Of course, thank you so much, everybody, who donates throughout the course of the weekend. The goal this weekend, $50,000. You can help us get there. Please do head on over to the link that was posted in the chats where you can donate. And every 30 US dollars will get you a raffle ticket. They're giving away anything from thousands and thousands of dollars worth of prizes and box sets and, and sets all the way to a, talking about Sean over here, a fully to painted 2000 point commission from Sean Naden himself, who will be wow. uh, uh, painting a 2000 point army for a uh, Renaissance man here. himself. Like that is a, that is a fantastic prize. Yeah, that's just it that's is. top tier right there. Absolutely. Okay, so let's dive in. We have Sean with Goff Orcs taking advantage of that brand new War Tastic update, and Tyler playing Forces of the Hive Mind. Um, of course, mixing it up a little bit here. So, so I guess you should out. go over. You should go over the Sean list because I, I guess I should handle the Forces list, right? Uh, you a person who do you even play Forces of the Hive Mind, Dustin? I don't I know. Have, your, what are your? Credentials? I don't think he does. What I have no credentials. credentials you no, no, you don't know me. I'm mediocre at best. There's nothing, nothing to see here. Just ignore me and move on to the next player. <laughs> so let's go over Sean Naden's list. You have it handy there, or am I st stalling? Well, a bit I more went for over you? Chuck Arnett's orc list. Um, I'm looking for uh, Sean's list. If that is yeah, indeed a don't golf don't list. don't tell us uh, Chuck's list when we're watching the show. Um, right, well, that's not well, that's the only orc list. Not in helpful. Here. Is that, it's the it's only old oh, list in here. It is. Oh well, I guess. It looks okay. like it. I, you know what? Let's call it what I see here. I see two, two battle wagons. Okay. I see a gas skull. I see that looks That's like Chuck Arnett golf snaggers. Wait. Okay. Nineteen ninety <laughs> points of orcs. Right. Is that the one we're going over right now? No. It's this. This. This is Sean though. This is the same Sean, list. Not no. Chuck. Yeah. Can't so be. why does it say Chuck's name in there? Is know. this is this actually Sean though? Let me. I'm, I'm looking at the Sean's or the list that says Chuck in here. Snaga, snaga, snaga. Yeah, that's the only orc list in here. So Three kill rigs. There's the no kill rigs. There's no kill rigs. This is not it. There's two kill rigs in there at the bottom, second page. Three kill rigs. No, I mean there's no kill rigs on the on the table right now. Those are battle. Mm -hmm. uh, table boss. Ah, see, you don't. Have it. Can somebody don't help have us it. out? We don't, oh, we don't, we don't have, have it. it. Well, it is yeah. some some weird uh, conglomeration of orcs. I can see battle wagon, battle wagon with a death roller. I can see <laughs> a couple of uh, beast snaggers on top. I've uh, there's a death killer war trike in there. There's some grots at the back, some grots on the side, um, some sort of gasgul I think in the middle there. I'm uh, sort of gasgul There's only one gasgul Well, it, I mean, it could be converted <laughs> gasgul He looks big and orky. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, it may, might be something else. I think that that might be uh, something worth All that I know like is a, that there's big, things big that boss, are red and big, green. Big, big, big boss. They want to go fast and they want to do some crumping. So why don't they we go want through something stuff. that you know about, which is forces. Forces. Okay, well, let's, let's go Tyler. through Tyler's list then. We have the forces list. It is Nids Kraken with Swarmy and Neurothrope, who's the warlord with uh, the guidance. Yeah, they're the cracking tongue. me up. I'm wow. sorry, buddy. I'm, I'm, wow. I'm, I apologize. Can we, for our... can we kick Scary out of here? Is I that is that allowed? This is <laughs> oh, this man. is a Canadian. This is the Canadian team right now. We can't we can't do that. We're too nice. Sorry. I will. Uh, I won't make any more dad jokes. The entire stream is somebody donates a thousand dollars right now. That's it. And then I will. You know what? That actually is a good way to get somebody jokes. to donate a thousand dollars. I'm pulling out my wallet right now. That's gonna be worth it. So. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, beautiful. We do have Thank Sean Nays list, so I'll finish going over this one and then we'll move over to Sean. So the Swarmy, two Neurothros, one of them with the Warlord with the Guidance and Barb. There are 10 Gargoyles, two by five Warriors, Death Leaper with uh, Cunning. So the uh, he counts as five models and is Obsec, which is just amazing for him. Three groups wow. of five Raveners. I was five Raveners, six Raveners, 175. That's six, isn't it? So, no, that's five. That's five. I'm, I got this. I got this. Then uh, th Bios at 90, so that's three Biovores. And then there's a GSC, four-armed Emperor. Okay, so that's a good way to get some CP back. He's got a Magus with hy uh, Hypnosis and Psionic Blast. 
There is five Akos with lying in wait. So they're going to come in just outside of three inches with a deep strike. Another stock squad of five Akos. If you look at his secondaries, this is probably going to make a lot of sense to you with those. There are also two by five Jackals, a Sanctus, and that's it. There it is. That's the list. Yeah, that's not bad. Now, think? quick question, though. Um, are we, doesn't Swarmy have to be the Warlord with the new update? Um, he's technically not a tyrant. He has a tyrant keyword, but he's not a tyrant. So I thought arguable. it was keyword. Lock. I think it was keyword. Lock. Is it keyword? <gasps> yeah, I'm pretty sure it's keyword. Lock. Tyler, if that's I think so. I don't. I'm not. Is it, I'm is, sure. I don't know. I don't know. I, I okay, think quick draw. Pull it out. Quick draw. Boom, boom. Let's do. It. Let's check it out. All right, pull uh, it. We're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna check it out now. We're gonna see. No, we'll uh, we'll just tap well, him on the shoulder and say, "Hey, you need to switch that around." <laughs> you need to, you need to switch it up. Um, well, in the meantime, so, will that get found out? Hmm? Yeah, that's what I was going to say, Scary. Why don't you go over Sean's list while we uh, while we look that up? Yeah, we'll do. So we've got clan culture goths. Excellent. Look at that. I'm already I'm loving this already. So the first thing we have is a patrol detachment with a war boss in mega armor, the crushing armor with a proper killy. And the big boss with extra extra gubbins. He spent four command points on this guy. What? Oh my goodness! Yeah, that is a lot of command points on that guy. He's got two pre-game stratagems. Uh, oh no, sorry, stratagem extra gubbins. I guess would be for the crusher armor, and the big boss would be for. Okay, so two on him. Ten Gretchen. Ten Gretchen. Five knobs with choppers and a power claw. Five more knobs with a big chopper. Uh. Six Storm Boys, a Battle Wagon with a Death Roller. Hey, I was right about that. Uh, a <laughs> yeah. Death Dread with four claws, so literally a distraction Carnifex uh, Death Dread. Then we have a Supreme Command Detachment with Gazgul Thraka himself, together with a another Patrol Detachment. So this is two Patrols and a Supreme Command Detachment. So you're spending two CP on a second Patrol for a War Boss on a War Bike. With Brutal But Cunning, uh, the Killer Claw with a big boss. So he's also spending, he spent one, two, three, four. Does Gazgul give you command points? Brutal But so. Cunning, the Killer Claw, and a big boss. That gives him, oh, the, is the Killer Claw a relic? Yes, the Killer Claw is a relic, but how do... Okay, so he spent one, two yeah, on that war boss. That, yeah, the war mm -hmm. boss, the war boss, yes. The War Boss has two, two uh, so he starts with zero CP, two on a patrol, and then two two relics and two Warlord traits. So he's starting with zero CP. Ten B snipers. Zero CP. Ten boys. Two units of four Mega Knobs, which I think are amazing. Three Squig Hog boys, three Squig Hog boys, a second Battle Wagon with a Death Roller, and another Death Dread. I like it. Death Dreads. I like the Death Dreads. I love the Death Dreads. They're so good. Hmm. I like this matchup then. So I looked it up and it does look like it's the keyword. It is the oh, keyword. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, Chad, Chad is also saying the Swarm Lord has the Hive Tyrant keyword. He does He does have the Hive uh, That one I knew. I wanted to make sure that it's actually specified the keyword in the uh, data or the ballot. Bal data slate? Balance data slate. There it is. That's the word. Data you got it. You got it. I got I got this. But it does. Yeah, it says Hive Tyrant. So there. So, oh, uh oh. It's fine. Well, that's it's why fine. that's why we read a list. They, these 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 guys literally wrote their list at three a.m. Yeah. last night. So yeah. we're gonna give them we're gonna give them a little bit of snack. A slack. They'll have a pass. Just for charity. They have a pass. You know they can wrestle outside in the parking lot. It's all fine. Like yeah, it's fine. We're gonna have a good time. We're gonna watch some orcs crump some bugs and some genes the occult who are still under the influence of the hive mind for some reason fighting alongside the tyranids, which is always a little weird because they should just be food. Why do you keep bringing that up so many times whenever Man. we're talking? You make you make sure to point that out. It's just like it's just rude. It's rude. It is Greek tragedy at its best. Okay, they're so passionate about wanting to do good by the hive mind, only to have the tyranid show up, the hive mind link be severed, and then come to the horrible realization that they are also food. <laughs> yeah, but poetic. It's it is poetic, but it's also a beautiful thing. It's the circle of the high fleet. Ah, uh, we're all biomass. So let's take a look at these secondaries. Yeah, while we transition out of your wonderful discussion about the hive mind and the tyranids, um, 
we should look at what these guys have chosen for their secondary. So uh looks like both of them have taken the uh the uh Nephilim data. Yeah. So, you know, they're both gonna be gonna be going for that. That's pretty standard, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh Sean has taken engage and no prisoners uh on uh, on the orc side there, on the goth side. And uh Tyler has taken interrogation and behind enemy lines. Yeah, so like so, I was saying before, with the secondaries you saw Tyler take, you see these Aqualites making a lot of sense now, even the Jackals too, because yeah. getting four points a turn, having two things in the enemy deployment zone is going to be a little bit easier with those things, just being able to run in there. Now, R&D, again, same thing, because they're gonna one of them has to be back there one turn anyway, so one way or the other, you're going to get a couple points for that. You're going to get your R&D. And he has so much infantry everywhere, It's that's basically going to be an auto 12 for him that with the lying in wait acolytes like sean could t- potentially use on the way he does have the models to do that but is it worth doing probably not i guess with gretchen maybe but if they're the only things holding that back objective probably not a good idea but interrogation got so much better now and i don't think i i, I, I obviously wasn't listening to uh scary when he was reading sean's list so I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure there was no weird boy in there. So he has no way to no deny. No weird boy. Uh, no weird boy. You know, you've got uh, a, a war boss on a war bike, right? So he's out in the mm-hmm. open. Uh, he's, and of course, now with mental interrogation, you also get the ability to get command points back, which uh, yes. will help the force of the hive mind as they do have some really good stratagems to use as both of these sides have started with fewer command points. Then, yeah, and um, it makes a lot of sense too, because with the neurothrope, yeah. you're going to be casting on 3d6. You know, yeah. it's going to be a lot makes more sense. likely to go off and get your extra CP. And there's a lot of things to spend yeah. CP on when you have two different codexes. Oh, 100. percent And those yeah. and those CP are so valuable now that you know now now that everything's been cut in half, right? So it's really yeah. good to be getting those back. The start of the game, it's uh, it's a big deal now because he doesn't have any other way to just gain them back. So it's like uh. Psychic like interrogation is a good way to do that. Uh, for no prisoners, there are like those are just he's going to get those points incidentally, which is always nice with uh, no prisoners. Like, oh, there's literally you've got bikes and you've got guys and you've got units. Like Sean's just saying, you know what? I'm going to have to kill a bunch of stuff. Yeah, I need to make sure that I get points for killing things. And I there think goes, there goes the death dread to go kill. Doing it. Oh, for sure. He's just going to kill. He's going to get 14, 14 score for the prison. No prison right now. Just get a one one point to start it off without. Uh, too much effort, but those were used to block him in, so we can't go too far forward. So Tyler's trying to control the board, which is very smart against the Goths. Doesn't want to get him the momentum that Goths can get if they start going really aggressive. Those especially uh, when you war, with that. Mm. right? Because if you war now, orcs get a five up uh, invul save, right? Yes. So it, it means that they get like a, you know, Gasgol for that is great. He gets double war. He gets both abilities to war, and that invul save can be really handy for a lot of the orcs, especially over the two turns that it happens. So if Tyler can kind of pin um, Sean into into sort of that corner, not only does uh, Sean will also lose the ability to have that advance and charge, right? Which which will help the orcs kind of get to where they need to go. Um, and uh, all in all, fantastic. Uh, Fantastic to see how this goes. Seems like um, Tyler went first and just quickly you know, moved up and screened. And uh, then uh, Sean is doubling up with the second turn. Now, uh, why don't we hop over to a game number three that we're covering there's today. There's so oh, the many games. Pod. That's right. Oh, my goodness. That we're back no way, in. There's more. Going back and forth. There is definitely more. This time is Josh and Gene Steel Cult versus Noah with his real name. This is the one I want to see. This is pure Gene Steel Cult. That's right. These are the people that yeah. have not been I'm... cut off from the hive mind yet. Oh, yeah. Josh and Noah, they did switch them out to make sure that we know who's who and where's what. Um, ah, but let's good. dive into their lists. Uh, do you have Josh S's list up and running and ready? Uh, no, filter. but I'll look for it. I'll look for it. I'm looking. I'm looking. Ramp, quick, riff, riff. Do you, do you have Noah's up, uh, Scary at all for the Imperial I know, Knights? I'm looking for it, but I was going to okay, say, you, you have already. Up. Head on over Somebody to riff, Scary quick. Hammer <laughs> and donate today. Help us out and support. Yeah, me. donate to to there. Charity Hammer for Child's Play, the organization that they're supporting, and. Uh, and help out the kids, you know, sick kids. Everybody loves helping out the the children, right? Right? Come on. So 
this matchup, we're going to get those lists out. We're going to check them out. We'll we'll go through the secondaries after that. But my namesake in this, Josh, playing the GSC. Uh, Dustin's going to be excited about that, going through that list, I'm sure. And, uh, you know, hopefully... list ready to rock and roll here. This is Imperial Knickets right. because you they have go... coconuts as they walk around and they're looking um, for the grail. Okay, then. And he's knocking over his models because knights, right? Yeah, right. that happens. Uh, they are defend the realm and lay low the tyrants, which seems to be the two chivalric oaths that they that are very easy to get and keep. Uh, but they are Quester Mechanicus House Tyrannus, which seems to be probably the most popular knight household at the moment. I believe that's zombie knight household. But in here we've got a unit of three armager helverins. Which, by the way, kill so much stuff. Oh, they're ridiculous. They are incredibly good. For less than 500 points, you get three of these things, and they will kill everything. I hate them so much. Uh, then we have two units of two Armager Warglaives with just heavy stubbers. Now, the Warglaives have, of course, the Chain Glaive and the, um, the Melter Lance thingy. And then we have a Knight Errant that is a Master Tactician with the Judgment. And he's a Knight Baron, and he has a Rocket Pod. And he's a knight of Mars. So a knight errant that gives all the warglaves like reroll ones to hit. Um, and of course, I believe some extra cool stuff. And then a knight paladin with the uh, princeps, the heirloom, the sanctuary, and revered paragon. I believe that's the guy that gives them their trait, uh, their uh, oath uh, permanently for the rest of the game, which is reroll ones to hit, which is really annoying. I've played against that before. But all in all, this uh, army starts with minus 5 CP, and uh, yeah, it's just a bunch of silly things that I don't want to see across the table for me. Bunch of silly things. That's yep. That covers it. That covers yeah, it pretty well. Great actually. way to describe Imperial Knights. A bunch of silly things. Bunch of silly <laughs> things that nobody wants to see across the table. Yep. <laughs> yep. Okay. Uh, uh, Dustin, do you have... Who, who, who what? <laughs> I said big stompy robots can be fun, though, if you play them. You don't have to think. If you much. play them, they're amazing. It's playing against yeah. them, and it's just like, ouch. I'm sorry, you did how much damage to me? You know what? I'll just take off my model. You don't need to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't, don't worry right. about it. Don't worry about it. I got this. I got this handled. Uh, I don't think Josh's list is in this dock, unfortunately. I know he's playing Twisted Helix. As I, was, I remember Alex mentioned it when we were talking to Colin. Oh, wait, wait. I lied. Our table bosses made me a liar because they got all this stuff on here like bosses. This is incredible. Okay, here we go. Josh's GSC list. So he's got two extra right. in here and leaders of the cult. So he's already using, he, he's it's going to be one detachment, I'm sure, but he's already spent three CP, but it's going to be worthwhile. There's a Clamavis. Ooh, I like that. I will tell you about that in a bit. There's a Clamavis. There's a Kelomorph with worm tooth rounds because you want that strength six, negative three, three damage gun. There's a Magus who is the leader, what well, a leader of the cult. He's got might from beyond and psychic stimulus. He's also got a familiar and he has the crouch link as well. So he's re-rolling a failed uh, psychic test every turn for free. And he has the focus of adoration. So anything, any core, and I think that counts for genius dealers as well. It's within six inches of him can heroic like a character. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. Ooh. Uh, Patriarch is a uh, mass hypnosis, a psionic blast, and he has the unwilling orb. So he has, uh, well, he, he has plus one to his witch fires, which is psionic blast and mass hypnosis, ironically, and smite. So he has plus one to all those casts. And he also has an infinite deny and an extra deny, which I'm sure the knights are very afraid of with all their psychic power. And then the he also has Prowling Adjutant, so he is the one that if he, when he gets charged, he can move six inches in any direction, then they can redeclare their charge. It is a normal move, though. That's something that a lot of people don't realize. It is a normal move. So technically, if you get charged, you could go into a transport, because it's a normal move. Yeah? Little tricks. Here you oh, go. That's what oh. you get for watching charity. Oh. You, get, you get little trick tips and tricks from the masters that are here, right? That's right, I call myself a master, because nobody's here you refuting. You definitely are, well, I'm definitely not going to refute the master of the Jinsu cult. Uh, I'll take you it. know, something might just come out of the shadows or the gutter and stab me while I sleep. Yeah, I, I definitely <laughs> don't. Then he also has a Primus, who is obviously the other leader of the cult. He has proficient planning, so he has the exacting planner, so he'll be able to do his uh, plus one to wound on two different units, and then it can be on uh, non-core units, just once a game. 
And he also has Alien Majesty, so his aura is re increased by three inches, so it'll be a nine inch reroll one's aura, and that is increased to, I believe that's a nine inch normally, so it's gonna be 12 inches when he can target something. And then he has a, looks like a 10, 12, oh, that's a 15 man drill unit. That's what I like to see. That is six <laughs> rock drills and a lot of, or uh, nine other acolytes in there. And it looks like there's one hand flame. No, eight hand flamers. Holy crap. There's nine hand flamers in this squad. It is decked out to the teeth and it has a trap sprung. So they're 3d6 charging. Take away the lowest. They will be able to do a lot of damage if they get in there. They are, they are jacked. Holy crap. And then he's got another five-man Acolyte squad with that with lying awake. Like you're always going to take at least one of these squads. They also have a flamer, so that's if in case he you know, they survive, they might be able to do something. Maybe he probably had three points left over. Hey Dustin, he's like me. Hey Dustin, huh? What? Are you done yet? Because this seems no. like it goes on forever. This is literally the fourth unit in this army. I'm like not even halfway there. You're gonna have to buckle up, buddy. This is I'm explaining uh, everything I'm to everybody. I'm buckling under Buck the weight of all this up. information. Yeah, you're going to buckle on. That's right. It's the pressure. The pressure's getting to you already. And then another five man Oculite squad. And this one has two hand flamers. And then another Oculite squad that has two hand flamers. And then another Oculite squad with three hand flamers. So we just put in hand flamers. Say, two hand flamers? Hands. No, there was three. Yeah, you would have been wrong. Would have been wrong. Oh. So technically, there, to, to recap that, there's four Oculite squads with a bunch of flamers in them, and one of them has the lying in wait to come just outside of three inches. And there's also a hybrid metamorph squad. It is a 10-man. They do not have flamers. I'm just going to point that out. But they're the fight. They're the fight and death guys. They're, all, they're awesome in Twisted Helix. And then not one, not two, but three groups of 10 pure strain genius to theirs. And one of them obviously Ooh. has, they came from below. So Great you get the pre move or go back in the deep. Yes, he is deep, Twisted Helix. That is correct. Great five is, is a big deal. Yeah. When you end auto-wounding... Uh, uh, spike psychic power as well. So I mean, like if you're if you're taking twisted helix, you take thirty genius scissors. If you take thirty genius scissors, you're taking twisted helix. That's just how this works. Uh, there's a, <laughs> the other one. Another one has uh, our time is nice, so they just get a basically a free might from beyond the first time they fight in the game. And then he's got a three man ridge runner squad, all with missile launchers and spotters. So they're forty eight inch range guns. And they have from every angle, so they have the come in from reserve turn one. And I'm still not done. There's also five Adeline Jackals with a demo charge. Oh, six, sorry, it's a six man. And they have a demo charge in there. So they can actually do retrieve knockman data, or sorry, Nephilim, Nephilim, Nephilim. It's Nephilim near. Nephilim. 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 And then he has Nephilim. And then he has two trucks with demo charges. Ah, and that is the list. Holy crap. Oh my goodness. All right, let's that give was, Dustin a little bit of break was, after geez. all that. That is this my is goodness. Me, this is me golf clapping you know, this monstrous effort of uh, oh, slow. an army that's for a faction that you know very well. <laughs> yes. So <laughs> I want to I want to get in and and talk about the secondaries that these guys have chosen, but just to give everybody a quick update on what's happening in the game here. Um, Noah, uh, they did, they did a roll off and Noah picked to, uh, defend first and, uh, Josh put eight units into deep strike. So we, uh, we know that right off the, um, the get go. Uh, but also, uh, the first shooting phase, we had a whiff on eight shots from the Helverin on, uh, Noah's side. So, so we, we have seen a little bit of action so far in this game, just to give everybody that quick update. On what's going on right now very nice very nice the the width i guess i was against the bikes so the minus one to hit is a big deal it is a big yeah deal. Now, i'm obviously pretty sure it was at the top there yeah <clears throat> that yeah. makes sense. well as long as they as those bikes you know get um get away scot-free that's actually not bad but in terms of yeah. secondaries uh noah has decided to take yield no ground has decided to take Renew the Oaths and grind them down. Grind them down, a decent choice. However, with the, um, especially in the first battle round, I don't think uh, Noah killed anything, which does mean no, that's uh, the big that'll thing be three it, right? points. Yeah, going first with taking grind is always a gamble because yeah. it means that, especially if you go first, most players will hide everything and they'll try mm -hmm. and stop you from killing anything, which does make it a 12 point secondary a lot of the times instead of a 15. However, as the game gets joined, he should be able to get at least nine, I would say, out of the secondary over the course of the game. Um, Renew the Oaths is a shadow operations from the Imperial Knights. It is a progressive objective. If you select this objective, Imperial Knight units from your army can attempt the following action. One Imperial Knight model 
from your army can start to perform this action at the end of your movement phase if it is within six inches of the center of the battlefield. The action is completed at the end of your turn, provided the unit performing it is still within six inches of the center of the battlefield. And every time your army completes this action, you score three points if it was completed by a non-Titanic model, four points if it's completed by a Titanic model, and you score one additional point if the action was completed by a character model. In addition to all of this, on a 4+, plus, you gain an honor point by doing the action as well, which is actually very, very good. I played against this at a tournament I went to recently, and I stumped my opponent from scoring it by literally making a circle with racks six inches around the center of the table so he could never get a knight within six inches to the center of the table. Um, and I tried very hard to stop it from happening, but it is a very easy secondary to, to, uh, to pull off. Well, there you go. There you go. It makes a lot of sense too. And you get even even more reason to watch these kind of streams with Charity Hammer and the experts on here because you got some tips from another expert, the Drukari expert. In this uh, in this case, those are those are good tricks. Well, to if know. there's terrain, you can hide your army. But if there's no, well, terrain, yeah. But if there's no terrain, you got you can't you don't you don't walk right. up to a table and say, oh, there's no terrain. Well, I just lose. No, you have to come up with new plans <laughs> and you have right. to know exactly what you're going to do. Yeah. See, this this is this is how you throwing play the game. shade already. I love it. Yield no oh. ground is the battlefield supremacy one for the knights at the end of your turn you score one point for each of the following conditions you satisfy for a max of three control half or more of the total number of objective markers on the battlefield which as you can see here the knight player has done um, and one or more imperial knights models from your army are within range of each of these objective markers so no allies no enemy units are wholly within your deployment zone and no imperial knight units from your army ended the turn closer to your battlefield edge than they were at the start of that turn, and no Imperial Knights fell back. Now, in this mission, is the battlefield edge the short board edge or the long board edge? Uh, this is the long board edge. It's in Dawn of War board edge. So if he has any Knights move closer to the long board edge, they will not get that extra point there. Oh. Cool. Huh. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah, interesting. Okay. You have to make sure there's something inside of the deployment zone to only get the allow them to get one point instead of two or potentially three. So yeah, really interesting there. What about the genes of the cult? The genes of the cult have engage, bring it down, and retrieve Nephilim, which makes a lot of sense. Now, bring it down. He's got to kill knights to to survive this game. So that's just that make that makes a lot of sense. R and D again. Your GSC, you take R and D. Like it, it's probably the only army now that they just always take it r&d can be denied by a lot of a lot of armies and against knights they don't really have the resources to do that but in any game gsc just have the tools to do that and with he ha he has what there was at least four five man oclet squads you know how many times you need to do r&d to get it full points four times you know what's really good at getting it five man oclet squads that's less than that's like 200 points it's just like all right well i'm gonna get 12 there we go done Engage, that one is harder to do now, but I actually it's really good for GSC as well because again he's going to be putting guys into the different the different corners here. He's already got the Ridge Runner seem to be coming in the bottom right from uh, reserve turn one, so he's going to be able to get some. I don't know if he's just taking some shots. Maybe he gets the big guys because there's windows there because they don't get obscured. So they're coming in there. He's already going to get that corner. The bikes at the top are going to move over to the left and they're going to get that corner there, and then that's going to be an easy easy two points turn one, no problem, and. What the heck is that? Oh, it's command points thing? Yeah, and the engage makes a lot of sense for him. It's two points turn easy, and at least one or two times he'll get three, but he goes in the back there to get uh, his retrieve. So it's it's great for him because it's another secondary that doesn't have to engage with his opponent at all, ironically, even though it's called engage. He doesn't have to actually fight. It doesn't rely on Noah doing something particular. He doesn't have to engage with him at all to get these points. They bring it down... I usually don't like taking these kind of secondaries because it gives your opponent some leverage on again control on what you're doing with them. But because it's knights and literally all he has gives up points for it, it it makes perfect sense. And Josh does have the ability to kill some of these things for sure. Oh yeah. yes, one hundred percent. Of course, now we see Josh moving up on his first turn, going to be sending in a unit of Speaking gene Speaking of which, <laughs> you know, it kind of works. And of course, using that amazing um, strategy of bringing in the Ridge Runners uh, with their first, uh, being able to come in from strategic reserve on the first turn as well. It seems all they yeah. um, 
uh, down there. Although, don't they all have to be within six inches of this, this, the board edge? Anyway, they do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they seem a little bit pushed <laughs> further in than they should be, um, but that's okay. They're probably tired after a, a long. It's fine. We, we, we keep <laughs> these guys apart. This is this is for charity. It's for the children. It's fine. You know what? Those red drones can come out uh, four inches they further. Could, it's fine. They could. This they is they can go wherever they want. They if Tyler can there. have a nerd throw by his warlord when there's a swarm lord on his list, these red drones come out four inches further. It's fine. Don't worry about it. However, why don't we? <laughs> why don't we dive on? <laughs> to the first table. Yeah, let's go back after, to the first table. After about uh, 45 minutes of us uh, taking a we have the yeah. Bloody Rose versus Bloody Rose. And well, it seems ten, like... 10 minutes on the other games like, and 40 minutes on the one Gene Steeler list. Seems like it's an yeah. absolute mess. Look at it. It looks like oh such a mess. What happened here? I don't There's know so what's going stuff. on. Oh my god. The uh, blood. Uh, blood. <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> Who said okay. there were rivers of lava? This is not lava at all. It's that, that's yeah. blood. That is all blood. There's no... <laughs> wow. Okay. I think it was just be prepared. Yeah, exactly. So what we talked about before is obviously happening. The rhinos moved to both both opposite corners for their leap of faith. And yeah. They defend the shrine. Oh, sorry. Defend the shrine. Defend the shrine. That's yep. what I defend mean. Defend the shrine. Yeah. Defend mm -hmm. the, those are their shrines. Those... Those rocks over the piles of blood, that's their, that's their shrines on both sides. Yeah. A rhino sitting on there is pretty safe as long as those, there's no uh, retrievers coming from the side there, but they can usually block off a lot of that. It looks like they don't have any angles to get on them. They seem to be safe there. They're going to get a lot of points for that. It's, it's basically a free 15 for both of them in this game. And as again, like I said, John did move some guys in the middle, or sorry, some ladies in the middle there to get that banner up, and it's going to force Jesse to respond to it too. No, one hundred percent. Now, of course, don't forget the defend the shrines does mean the person going second could potentially lose it if their yes. opponent. The person going first could lose it if their opponent takes it. At the and end of the game. John so did go first. 12. John did go first, so we could see yep. if Jesse takes advantage of that late game. Mm -hmm. We could see that um, you know be a be a factor in terms of the score, depending on what happens. But Jesse right now doesn't seem to be getting too aggressive. He's doing minimal. Uh, pushes into the middle of the table. I think he's doing just enough. He put like a model on the middle objective just far enough to be able to kill that unit and potentially clear them off. John, though, has put two models on that objective, very smart play by John, to force Jesse to shoot that unit off the board mm -hmm. uh, and to deal with it. So, um, But uh, John getting a primary for holding an objective he didn't hold, which does mean they are playing... Um, they are playing uh, one of the one of those, and uh, three points for his defend the shrines, which makes sense. Yeah, see, it makes perfect. Sense. We, we, it's almost like we know this game well enough that we can predict these kind of things. And then now yeah, that it's I've almost said, like you two know fun. what you're talking about. Almost, almost, almost. But I no, make no claim to uh, that whatsoever. Everything I say is just out of my rear end, and I guess most of the things uh, just happen to be <laughs> lucky. <laughs> Coincidentally, sometimes do. it makes sense. Uh, yeah. Now, we did also get an update on this um, that uh, apparently Cassie did explode in this match, but no one was close enough to get hurt. So it looks like there's there's been a little bit of action, like we said, a little bit of blood is being spilled so far. Who's Cassie? That's exciting. Uh, uh, who's Cassie? Castigator? Oh, yeah. that's what I'm assuming you. it is. But yeah, the, um, our, our table it, it bosses click, are using the short click. forms. So well, they should be, too. I should know this stuff. I don't. Uh, can you just make it up words? Cassie, because I think it's some Cassie. Of, I, I know. I know a lot of Cassie's like, what? Cassie exploded. But I just had lunch with her. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah that so. Makes sense. So so we have been seeing a little bit of action going on here uh, to see. For the most it part, Jesse's turn, but it looks like he's scoring up some points. So maybe that that might be the end of turn one. Then, yeah, he I might have not. My been eyes able aren't to really that good. I can't. Of, he might have well, not been the... able to kill that squad uh, to get that middle objective. If he does that, uh, then John's going to start with a twelve that point is, primary. That is which, huge. If that's the in this no mission, way that they kill phenomenally that. Phenomenally good. No like, way. That really, happen. really good. You know, no if, way. if John was able to pull that off, maybe with like some good miracle dice, maybe with uh, you know, an um. 
uh, faith, whatever it's called, the stratagem to like uh, uh, one of them change. is in cover, and that would uh, that would last a long time with uh, yeah miracle mm-hmm. dice and mm-hmm. and just Cassie mm, the captivator says animal yeah uh, and hello to everybody in chat thanks a lot for coming to hang out with us today on Charity Hammer we're going to be doing this all weekend long there's going to be amazing games great people quality 40k being played with amazing shoutcasters like josh and dustin over here we're having a great time and sorry you don't 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 disclude yourself the archon that. lives in the it's... shadows and requires no introduction until the knife is in your back um and then... that was rehearsed that was so rehearsed <laughs> I said you just little forced that, uh, no, oh. that was rehearsed <laughs> and then we have uh, of course in support of child's play uh, so make sure you head on down to the links. Uh, we put the links in the chats. Donate today. Where goal is fifty thousand dollars. We're trying to hit. Help us reach that goal. Help the kids who are going through a rough time and their families at hospitals at uh, at shelters uh, have stuff to do uh, when they're there. Help with rehabilitation. It is an international mm-hmm. organization that helps not only. Uh, procure and get games and stuff for the kids but also uh, hires people to set them up and make sure they're running properly and things like that as well so head on down and support a great cause this weekend let's head on over to game number two oh i have chat open now chris winters yes he did josh did not take the brood swarm secondary and it is a little surprising they didn't do it but i feel like because the he's playing twisted helix he has to use a lot of his units really quickly in order to get the get both the points and kill some things so he's actually it would be very risky to do it against the knights because he would be sacrificing a lot more units to get the the full points for that so it's i think engage is actually a little bit safer for him because he can use less resources he can be a little bit safer with it but i agree broodstorm would have also been a decent choice for him but that's that's the reason why i believe he did not take it but on to the yes. sean versus tyler game well, I, I was like going to bring up the the chat's questions, but we were we were jumping games pretty quickly, so I wanted to just keep the train rolling. We have three exciting games to cover, so we got to keep this rolling. There's so much to yeah, talk we, about and so little time. So little time. So on this game, we, we, we got a quick update here. I mean, you can kind of tell by the, the state of the board that uh, that Sean managed to take out that bike screen that you guys had uh, described that he put up there to, to stop the orcs moving forward. So he, he took that out and was able to claim the middle of the board there. Uh, and it overall was, I mean conservative but but a but a good play from both of them and sean's kind of taking control of the board so far so that's kind of where we're at right now um i do like what sean is doing here he's basically taking all three objectives but his uh, heavier units are sort of like straddling in between the objectives on the flanks and the one in the middle Mm -hmm. to make sure that he can react to wherever the tyrant is decide to go he's of course screening out his backfield with the grots uh, using other units to make sure that the you know the gene stealers have a harder time to uh, arrive deep strike. However, we do know that Tyler had some larger uh, some units of uh, acolytes and whatnot, uh, probably some hot lying in wait and being able to get nice and close to get points and or uh, do some secondaries and or kill some things, which is going to be very interesting to see. Now, the two battle wagons I think are going to be an issue for Tyler because. They have death rollers, and I don't think um, Tyler has anything to kill them at range other than, like, going to punch them in close combat. And if he does no. that, he has to contend with uh, Mega Knobs, uh, War Bosses, a Gazgul, and some and Killicans, as well as the, the Hog Riders. Yeah, exactly. Tyler has, like, he has a lot of killing units, but unfortunately they're killing in close combat, so it's going to be a trading game. Now, the problem with that is that, like you said, his killy things aren't as good at killing the they can't do it in, in range like on average for sure like he, he just put his whole army into it and get lucky to do that so he has to go into close combo with it and even then he's got to use some pretty important resources to do that so he's got to be careful about where he uses them and when he did use the uh lying in wait squad to get the r d in the hardest quarter and it looks like sean was kind of he was he was half hazardly zoning at the backboard with his Gretchen there, but that's when Ty was like, you know what? Let's just get it this out of the way right now. Put them in, did the R and D in the hardest spot, and then he's gonna move on from there. So now he doesn't have to worry about R and D in uh, the back corner. So the other two should be a little bit easier for him. Those bikes, as long as they survive here, I think they're outside of charge range from behind that wall, so they should be able to just easily do it there because there are oh no, there's only five. There's only five. So he has to not roll a six. 
And now that I've said that, he's going to roll a six, and I apologize, Tyler. That is my fault, and that is on Master me. Curse. Yep, that is that is on me. I, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Tyler. If you roll a six, that is you can 100 percent blame me. That's my fault. But uh, um, I will say the <laughs> for anybody who doesn't know, Genes of the Cult have this ability. They can come in within eight inches when they deep strike in from just ambush. outside of inches. Just correct, outside of, outside of H, uh, or they can come in just outside of six. Correct, but then they can't. But then they can't charge. charge. But they can shoot. They, can they shoot, just can't though. charge. Yeah. Yeah. Come outside with. Uh, come outside of eight, and you can charge. Come outside of six, and you can't charge, but you can still shoot. That Great versatility there. It does mean that uh, screening units, like a lot of folks like myself who love screening out that nine-inch bubble between units to make sure that it's hard for folks to deep strike in or use reserves effectively. Um, it makes it a lot harder to zone out the table to the point where you might oh, as well. Yeah. Just not try half the time. There's, <laughs> there's the amount of, the amount of like times that tiny, tiny little part of the table because you're all like clumped up together. Oh, exactly. Like, the amount of times that I've played against people with Genius or Call and they start screening me, and then I just remind them, by the way, I can come in within six and still shoot. And they're like, okay, forget this. They just move normally. They just like, you do what you want with your Genius Strikes. I don't care anymore. There's no point. <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah. so much brain power. I don't have the resources to do that. Just go ahead. Just I'm go not ahead. trying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done trying. It's 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 made me focus a little bit more on deep striking some shooting. It's like, okay, now I'm gonna come in and shoot you then and get exposed. But <laughs> that's that's genius to their stuff. It looks like the Kelomorph at the top top there is the he's using that as his resource to tr his basically his best range resource, I think, to try and kill some of this uh dangerous uh close combat at, at range, and it looks like he's shooting the depth dread. That's what it looks like. He, I don't think he can target much else. So it makes sense to try to get rid of that because fighting that thing in close combat. If you don't kill it and you're going to be hard pressed to with anything with like the drill squad, he's going to kill you back. <laughs> so shooting it with the Kalamorph is a smart idea. I think anything in a Gene Steeler cult, I don't know what you think, Josh, but like anything in Gene Steeler cult has the potential to kill anything in any other army and then die. Like it's very, un it's very <laughs> unlikely <Yeah. laughs> that the thing that killed something will survive. Anything will survive. Yeah. They're a very tradey army in that sort of way, but it, it's it's heavy on making sure that you're trading in the right ways, right? I mean, that's that's part of the key strategy with that. I mean, Dustin can speak to it a lot better than I could ever, but like you're gonna you're gonna get up there, right? With especially with what he has in there, you're gonna be in those close quarters eventually. But yes, eventually, you're. You're you're just making sure, and you want to try to make sure that you're trading the right ways. Yes, for sure. Because uh, it's, especially it's in orcs, game. especially yeah, in orcs, for sure. But what the heck, Kara Quinn? I'm not Seth. I'm Dustin from Stutter Scrub. Come on, man. You know me. Come on, come on. <laughs> Maybe they <laughs> thought you were Jesse. Maybe they thought I was Jesse. Maybe they, but is my voice a little raspy right now? That might be the only thing. But I don't know. I think my voice is sexier. Yeah, that is the I vaping think. on stream. I don't know it what's going vaping on. on. Yeah, see? <laughs> I'm not the only one freaking vaping on stream. <laughs> on the podcast. Oh, but, it's a neurothrope. Uh, I'm sorry. That's a neurothrope. I was thinking he doesn't have a Kelomar for this. It's a neurothrope. She's psyching him out. That's the other way that he has Psy to yeah. psychic power. Now that makes a lot more sense, too. Okay. That's... So okay. what's the, the, the stream cleared up long enough that I can see this, the neurothrope instead of a kelomorph. What is the benefit of having right now with the current meta, right? What is the benefit of a forces of the hive mind style list to just doing either simple tyranids or simple genes of the cult? Uh, genes of the cult give tyranids a, more flexibility in their secondaries, like R and D behind enemy lines. It gives them a lot a lot easier to do both of those and it gives them a, a extra close combat punch with some cheaper units that can hit just as hard if not harder so like the i find that the genius of their cult have more ability to kill bigger stuff than the standard uh tyranny stuff you're going to see like warriors and raveners aside from like a tyrant the majority of them are going to be a lot better at killing the smaller things like or like the multi-wound but more model count while yeah. genius they're called trade better into the bigger stuff and again they give a lot of uh, options for uh the secondaries they give a lot more flexibility plus plus it's not so much of what you get it's what you don't lose anymore because if you're going to be losing your snap to comparative whenever your warlord dies mm -hmm. well when you're forced with the high mind you don't have it anyway so you're like well whatever i'll still use him i don't care kill him go ahead 
Right. <laughs> so so you're not like trying to keep that that hive tyrant alive for like the long, exactly. the long term. Or the swarm lord in this case, who is totally the warlord. Is the warlord. 100 yeah. percent yeah. yeah, I think we yeah. went over that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. yeah, that's, yeah. Yes, exactly. We did. It's we okay, did it's okay, KR right? Quinn. It's 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 a bald guy thing. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Been hearing that my well, whole life. <laughs> So uh, it, what is, I want to hear from everybody in chat. If you're watching on Twitch, if you're watching on YouTube, grab your keyboard right now. Unless you're just lurking and you're just grab it. Yeah, out. don't type on it. Just grab it. Don't type. Just grab it. <laughs> just smash it over your. Just smash your forehead down and make some random. Wow, that, was, that got dark. That got dark. Uh, real quick. <laughs> instead of instead of that, you can just tell us. You know, for game one, we have sisters versus sisters. Uh, who do you think is going to win game one? Oh game two, we have Sean versus Tyler. Uh, who do you think is going to win? And game three, we've got Knights versus Genes of the Cult. Who's going to win that's not Genes of the Cult? Please put it down in the comments. Let us know what you think is going to happen in the games we as we move on to game number three. Let's see how these oh, Knights are Oh, but first, before we go, before we go, before we go, we have a slide up that they want to go over. Raveners okay, okay. attacked the biker boss, and okay. they whiffed. So he lived Ooh. with two wounds left. Oh, that no. That means the biker boss gets the hit back. Oof. Oof, that hurts. That's gonna kill that's gonna kill some but that's, that's gonna, gonna kill, kill some of the That's ravenous. gonna kill some ravagers. Sure. All right, here we are. We are back on the Knights versus GSC. I love seeing this. There we go. Bikes moved over there to contest that objective if they can kill the knight because he's obsex, so they're not gonna be able to take it away from him completely, but he get his engage points there, like I said. Yeah. I love the change to engage being that it's if your unit the starting strength was three or more. Yes, you get your engage on all fronts. Uh, so yes. I think that that makes that secondary a lot more feasible than it used to be. I'm looking at units of like three Reaver jet bikes in my list to just quickly go around and fly and do stuff. I yeah, think that's really really good. When you move as fast as they do, it's ridiculous. Why wouldn't you? Exactly. Yeah. Right. Makes sense. You get, they'll get those uh, secondary points in the bag without having to do anything. Uh, so here. It looks like the Steelers put 13 wounds through the night, ends up only taking six wounds. Oh, my God. That's just... With the Tyrannus? Oh, no. Oh, oh my God. Oh, no. Oh, that's... my God. Yeah. <laughs> no, See, no. right here, this, this, that right there, that's why he didn't take Brood Swarm. There it is, right there. Because that happens with close combat sometimes. If you bounce, you crouch and go in fetal position. So, <laughs> isn't that just you, how you, Gene the Cult is in general? No, oh, most of the time wow. we take it like men. We take it like men most of the time. We just die like men. While in fetal position. We, you know, while in fetal position. But we die like men in fetal position. It's fine because we're used to this. This is what we're, we're preparing for when the hive mind comes to collect us. And, and he does. Right? <laughs> yes, exactly. This is, we're preparing. It's good practice. So we, it's good practice. It's fine. This is go. not a big it's deal. Like, so it's like when you squish a bee, you know, like they release pheromones that alert the hive that somebody has squished a bee or, you know, and... Um, and so it's like that. You squish a bunch of genes to cults, and they release pheromones that uh, attract the uh, hive mind even more. And a single tear is shed for all of them. Yes, K.R. Quinn, as uh, Best of Faction already told you, it is everything new. Literally everything, everything. new. Data slate, points, codexes, missions. Everything is new. This is the newest and the best, and some of the best players in the world.